Hello, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran, and now I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And this is episode 362. In this episode, we're going to be recapping close to all of the moves that happened in NFL close free to. agency so far, fellas. How you doing? A, a bunch of news is coming at us all at once. Good old NFL. Uh, it's been pretty bizarre to see just an unbelievable amount of moves being made this offseason. I think Sauce tweeted it. That it feels like he's playing a game of Madden. He didn't Madden lie. Yeah. Unbelievable amount of moves made. Uh, it, it's unfortunate that I haven't been able to enjoy the fun as much as others. However, it's been great for the league. Some great news uh, being, being brought out to us. And we're going to be seeing some fun teams next season. Been fun, a lot of basically the whole running back landscape. It felt like changed hands in the Shout last the 24 RBs. hours. You know, we you mentioned on the car that yeah. there's been questions in the last few years about paying running backs, and damn near all these running backs got paid. Not on you know huge CMC like levels, but they all got a decent contract. You know, got some money guaranteed. So hopefully we see maybe a, a bit of a level playing field where nobody gets paid. We don't get paid something crazy. Running backs going to rivals have been the thing that you know has excited me. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. First you time. know, Saquon going to. Where he went, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> Derrick Henry beating a team and then going to that team that he beat was exciting. You know, Aaron Jones getting the release going where he's like, I, I thought that was cool. Uh, but it's been fun just to enjoy what's been going on, you know, watch my teams prevail on this day. And I'm excited to talk about it, man. Have, have the Bills really prevailed? They created cap space. Okay. And I love Derrick All right. Fair I loved every bit. Yes. Shout out to Josh. Josh OG. Gave back like 14 you, you, mil. You, you had a doubt he was going to do that? Come on. I'll restructure, man's like me. Sorry. <laughs> you give me a contract. <laughs> no, me too. I'm not doing <laughs> it. But if we're going to offload it and I get it eventually, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. No, me personally, That's I would never do it. Yeah, nah, nah. If I was no, I but, want my money. But I'm just gonna figure it out. He's gonna get it regardless. Kind of yeah. what they do with every single. Say so when you're making ever. that much bread, nah, I need that. That's all it is. He's just he's gonna get it. It's just uh, offloading. Buffalo, bro. offloading. Yeah. yeah, and just creating that into a signing bonus. You know, in honor of NFL season, I think prospects knew how big of a day this was. They turned up so right here. So on their app, I mean, they have plays here that we got to get into. Just letting you guys know, use code PAS, get a 100% deposit match on prospects. Prospects, the best DFS app. Patrick Mahomes, second. more or less, 4,350 and a half yards. Damn. That feels like a lot, but that it's Mahomes. 4,400? Yes. They haven't really made any 4, moves yet. Okay. 4,351. Got it. Saw mm -hmm. them flirting with uh, Curtis Samuel, perhaps. Oh, but man, I would love that. Darren on Mooney was Anything another target. Better. He went to Atlanta. Listen, it's Patrick Mahomes. We're overthinking it. Yeah, We're going to go more. more. In four of his weak. six seasons as a starter, he's... Went what do you more have than this. He had 4,183. The year before, he had 5,250. Nah, I'm You're going under. You're for that 4,800. I'll be honest. I'm going, I'm going less, excuse me. Less for sure. You're going less. Are you going more or less? What was the number? 4,351. 4, 4, more. He's done it damn near his whole life. More. They didn't do it last season. I'm they have done. More. They made no moves. And Travis Kelsey I trust, not I trust what they're going to do. You know, they're going to get somebody in the draft. I'm going to talk about two quarterbacks that changed teams. Kirk Cousins going to the Falcons. Prize picks right now on the wrap. 4,100 passing yards, more or less, next season. Out of three out of the last four, he's done it three times. Last year he was hurt, so he obviously couldn't do it. Going from Jettas and TJ to Drake London and Pitts, a little different, but nonetheless, and still Arnold something Mooney. to preface. Yeah. We're going to see an ascension from Jake London. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, uh, I cannot wait. Coming off an injury... I think I'd stay away. I don't know if I'd touch. And you know it. who's going to get some passing uh, passing looks as well? Bijan Robinson. I feel like that's where they need to utilize him a little bit more. Getting Darnell Mooney also in the building is a huge ad for them. Hopefully, Kyle Pitts can be one hundred percent healthy. I'm looking at more for sure. Kirk Cousins, four thousand one hundred yards. That's what I'm going with. The Falcons got some weapons. It's not the Vikings' weapons, but they do got Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson. They just signed Darnell Mooney. If Kirk is healthy, I don't see him not getting. 4,100 mm -hmm. passing yards. Do, you know, do they have his touchdowns up there? They don't. It's just uh, passing yards right now. Are you are you in on the, the Mooney train now? Darnell Mooney is solid. Come along for the He's ride. He's not a baby. wide receiver one. Come along Correct. for the ride. He's no, not. He's 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 also had like the highest uncatchable deep ball yeah, rate. So it's like a take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. But uh, he drops the ball, but I think he gets open. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. This next quarterback. Russell Wilson, 3,100 yards more or less with the Steelers. That's, that's basically saying we don't know if he's going to start 17 games. That's <laughs> oh, my what God. He just smacked tells. him in the face. Well, he's a dink and dunk guy at this point. Uh, he is a dink and dunk. I would go more. Yards, that's like less than 200 yards a Last game. Last season, he had 3,070. 
I'll go more. And over the course of the season, he got benched towards the end. With respect for my boys, Corlin's son, Jerry Judy, Deontay, and George Pickens are better. And Pat, it's, too. It, it, Pat, Pat. Farm, he doesn't love to throw to the tight end. That's one thing. Can't throw Need to lock in. Uh, but I will say I like their weapons a little bit more than ours. I will take the more on this one. That's if Russell Wilson line. starts I'll say more. the season, this is more for me as well. And if we're going to go, quarterback. He's going to start the season. Is he going to finish? That's the thing. Who knows? We don't know. That that's the risky part about it. Now, this last name we'll mention: Josh Allen, four thousand two hundred and one passing yards. <laughs> Josh <laughs> Allen. Less than oh. Josh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> More. <laughs> it's Josh Allen. If you take the lesson on Josh Allen, something. You don't wrong take a lesson on anything. Not no, even his interceptions. Did we go more on everything? You went less on Mahomes. Yeah, hater vibes. <laughs> I went more. I went more on Mahomes, more on Allen, more on Kirk, and more on Russ. That line for Mahomes is also dependent on whether they're going to get him some help or not, which they haven't yet. That's the only reason why I stand where I stand. Curtis Samuel is on the way, buddy. Okay. He's on the He's way. He's not a bad player. She's going to be on him. Rashid for 17 games, not for eight Turn or nine. me on. I only say that for fantasy football purposes. That's about it. And you can you use slept. code PAS on Prospects for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Make sure to support Prospects with our code. Now, fellas, free agency you know, kicked off. Kirk's uh, nickname on Pro Football Focus is Kirk Tober. Fuck with that. Yeah, Prospects is great in October. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm assuming that's Did they call him Kirkio Banks or is that someone else? That's, I, it's, I don't know, but that sounds fire. So uh, I okay. guess you can keep it. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that, Riv, because the first topic of the show is talking about Kirk Cousins. Absolutely. Because Gotta he him. is the headliner free agency, the best player available, you can argue, in free agency. Who is more of a headline, him or Saquon Barkley? Kirk Honest Cousins. question. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Honest question. I think it was Kirk. Saquon shook up the internet. It was shook the up, captain. He shook up our area. He like did. The he, did. He, did. He, he did. He did. It was the captain. Kirk Cousins is going to the Atlanta Falcons. It was the captain. Four-year, $180 million. <laughs> I mean, the whole coach is behind this move. Quavo is behind this move. He's <laughs> from Atlanta. Atlanta. He's behind this move. How dangerous <laughs> not 2017, does Captain no. Kirk, <laughs> Kirk O'Chains, make the, the Atlanta Chains. Falcons? Oh. How serious does he make the Falcons? Well, we spoke about this the last time we were here talking about football. That and it we turned were, into a Rams and Packers debate. That yeah. is also what it, it determined yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we spoke about it. We understood that with Kirk now at the helm, this probably makes them the favorites to win the division. Hell, you said this the last time we spoke. They almost won the division without a good quarterback, or at least go, a good Good quarterback consistent play. But it's Kirk, Kirk Cousins, so long as he's healthy, so long as we don't have to worry about that Achilles going to the season. You look at the weapons that they have on that offense. The offensive line's obviously a solid unit. You go out there, and we've already spoken about it. Drake London, Kyle Pitts. Now you go and you sign Mooney. You added some extra talent. I thought that they would venture the idea of uh, at pick eight, maybe looking to bolster up that wide receiver uh, crowd as well. But now they have Mooney. I don't anticipate that would be the case. I still like Quinion Mitchell at pick eight. Wouldn't be surprised if they went offensive line just to continue to add to it. But I think you you understand they're trending in the right direction on the defensive side of the ball, adding Quinion would solidify their secondary. But Bijan Robinson, Tyler Algier, they're building something great. And I feel bad for Arthur Smith. He finally got a quarterback, or I should say the Falcons finally got a good quarterback. I feel like they could have went out there and executed a solid offense, but obviously that's not going to be the case. But Kirk Cousins is a huge, huge boost to this offense, and I'm really looking at Drake London. We know he has the talent. We saw it last year in, in, in moments with Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke. But now that we look at Drake London with Kirk Cousins, he's finally going to be getting the amount of looks that he's deserved. And now we're going to be seeing the statistics match the talent he's going to break out. Kyle Pitts, it's a matter of health and consistency of staying on the field. But I still firmly believe in the talent of a Kyle Pitts. We all know that that Kyle Pitts is Mr. Dell's guy. I'm sure he's going to... Are you a Florida Gator fan? I like the Gators. Yeah. He's just I've noticed that. Like AR, Kyle Pitts, you've been out swimming. But to be fair, <laughs> AR, fire. No, AR I'm fire. with you. Kyle Pitts put up an unbelievable rookie season. I'm with yards, you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm There's some validity and, and some fairness to your love Were for you those Were you a Gators. Vernon Hargraves fan? Nah, honestly, I liked Pitts a lot, but Richardson, because I feel like coming into your Richardson was kind of slept on, oh. like he had the tools to do it. Um, but then once he broke out and top five pick, I was like, I'm all in. We're here. Okay. I was shocked to see him climb as much as he did, but obviously we understood that he has the assets, just didn't have the the, the proper tools around him. But obviously going back to, to Kirk, the Falcons are going to be the team to be in that division. I still like what Tampa Bay did. Tampa Bay really has done a great job this offseason, for sure, bringing back the players that were impactful to them last season. Uh, we, that was a, a big concern coming into this this 
free agency period. But the Falcons obviously making the power move, bringing in Kirk Cousins, answering their biggest question on their football team. The Falcons can make some noise. Another team that was a quarterback away. Seems like a 50-50 proposition nowadays. You have, uh, you know, some teams working out. You look at the Rams, look at Tampa Bay with Tom Brady. Some teams that didn't. Look at the Broncos, look at the Jets. Um, But this Atlanta team feels like they really are just quarterback away. Last season, they were 11th in pass block win rate. Defensively, they were top five in um, success rate for, you know, just defense as a whole. Mm -hmm. They have everything in place. They just really need that quarterback to come and solidify themselves. And I was surprised to see Kirk Cousins move off. You know, when we were having our, I guess, you know, uh, when we were guessing where these quarterbacks from Atlanta, it felt like he was so Minnesota, you know, especially everything he's been through when he was kind of either looked over or disrespected in Washington where they just never gave him that long-term deal. He goes to Minnesota, gets that guaranteed money, um, but ended up moving on. And I don't think it's the worst thing in the world because you look at that division in the in the NFC South, you mentioned it, that Tampa Bay brought back their players, but... Outside of bringing back their players, I don't know if they really improve the team, right? And you have Carolina, who, of course, is still in a rebuild. They have a long way to go, although they've given out a ton of money to offensive linemen and defensive linemen mm-hmm. and linebackers. And then you have the Saints, who I don't really have much faith in the Saints. I don't have much faith in uh, Derek Carr. I don't have uh, much faith in the coaching staff. There's just not a lot there that really gets me going. So he gets to stay in a dome in Atlanta, which I think is important for Kirk Cousins. He gets he to go to a stuff. division. Uh, gets to go to division that's go. probably the worst in the NFL. I mean, he's been in the dome for the last what seven years now. We're going on six, seven years. Whenever he moved to uh, to Minnesota, so I think it's a great move for Kirk. You you mentioned the weapons. Everything is set up. I think really the only question is Zach Robinson, the offensive coordinator, how uh, how well will he be able to implement all of these players into his offensive scheme? But Kirk Cousins coming from Kevin O'Connell, you have Zach Robinson, both from the Sean McVay tree. I, I don't see a really a reason why it shouldn't work. So offensively, they're in, they're intact, they're intact. Defensively as well, and it's a very winnable winnable division. They're minus 115 last I saw in terms of winning the division. So they are the favorites on Vegas. And depending on how their schedule looks, they were what third place last season, if I remember correctly. They second, were second place. Second place. Mm-hmm. Um, but being in the NFC and being in that division, you know, they have. I think the floor is 10 wins. Yeah. Obviously, we haven't seen the schedule yet, but just being in the NFC, they propel into like one of the top five or six teams at absolute worst. Yeah. So they're looking like a team that could win, you know, double digit games, if not more. Their schedule is not easy. Like it was last year. Last year, the NFC South had the easiest schedule in football. Uh, this season, the Falcons opponents, they're going to face the Cowboys. They're going to face the chiefs. They're going to face the chargers uh, out of division, the Seahawks as well. They're going to face the Eagles for the and, East, yes. and the Vikings. Uh, some winnable games there. Yeah. Th- those are some winnable games, but I Chargers do think... Can, that's a beatable team. The Seahawks are yeah. a beatable team. They are some tough opponents in here, though, so yeah, I don't think I'm their schedule is, is extremely light. But you mentioned it. Like, the learning curve going from Kevin O'Connell to Zach Robinson, who worked together with the Rams, it's not going to be much. And I think Kirk Cousins is going to have success. The injury is the only thing that you have to be cautious about because he's going to be 36 at the start of the new year, and... He just came off an Achilles injury. So that's always worrisome. But this is how a team is supposed to go after a quarterback. I feel like when you have a roster that is ready to compete, you have to sign the best available quarterback that gives you the best chance to win. That's why as much as I held Arthur Smith into high regard, Going into last season with Desmond Ritter when Mistake. Jacoby Brissett was on the market. Baker Mayfield yep. was signed for the minimum with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they had a Pro Bowl level season. Heck, I think Sam Darnold would have been better than Desmond Ritter last season. I mean, there were options out there. <laughs> there were options. You could have signed Gardner Minshew as oh, well, sure. who with the Colts kept them afloat. You know, there were so many options to the point that I, I don't think that Arthur Smith gets that pass. But the Falcons now, I, I think they look really good. I, I'm still keeping in mind the Kirk that I saw last year, 18 touchdowns, five interceptions, yep. over 100 passer rating. He mm-hmm. he was he could have been at the top of the MVP race had he stayed healthy. And the Vikings were finally rolling with him. They, they beat the 49ers when their squad was hobbled up. No Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison had a breakout day. And I think now we're finally going to see... Drake Linden, Kyle Pitts, maximize the fullest potential. And I think if you're a Falcons fan, you got to be excited about that. Even if they don't make another move, this should be the favorite to win the NFC South. In regards to where they stack amongst the other NFC teams, I don't know quite yet. The only team definitively that I think are better than them 
are the 49ers. I think every other team, Lions? you can make little arguments for. The Lions are in that territory where I would say, you know what, I think the Lions are a little okay. bit better than the Vikings. I, I but agree there. I mean, the Falcons, excuse me. Mm-hmm. But then but when you look at the Lions and the Falcons, though, and you look at the talent on both teams, is it a big difference? It's not a huge gap. They're, I mean, they look very similar on paper. You know, you both you have really strong rosters and you have quarterbacks that are both above average quarterbacks, but probably not top five, obviously top eight level guys, but they can more than win you a playoff game. If not more, you have offensive pieces there. Defensively, Detroit's they were better. The Falcons were better last great. season, yeah, but great. offensively, you probably still trust Amon Ra, Laporta, uh, I'm running back. Jameer, really, uh, David. Uh, yeah, but you got Bijan over there. Yeah, yeah Bijan, yeah. If, if we're talking about, like, the Falcons' best four, Drake, London, Pitts, Mooney, Bijan. Jameer versus, and Bijan is in the conversation? It is. Oh, it okay. is. It is. True. But against Amon, Laporta, if you want to use Jamison Williams, we can use Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds. <laughs> uh, Josh Reynolds and then isn't on the team. Jameer right <laughs> Josh Reynolds isn't on the You're team. You're correct. Right so if you – those four – I would lean the Lions, but I think it's not a clearing. I think it's a bit, bit of a conversation, especially the, the, the Lions have just done more. Not the third yeah. best yeah. team, but I feel like there's an argument. You lean the Lions because they just went to the NFC Championship. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I where you lean that. the Lions. Like I have a ton of teams here in the NFC that I think is an argument for. So if you want, I'll just rattle them off, them off, and you tell me if the Falcons next season will be better. Can I ask than you a these question? Why are you not? smirking? Because <laughs> yeah, I'm why. curious to see these answers. I think these answers. I just know why he's smirking. Let's go. Okay. You know why I'm smart. Are, yeah. We're saying, are we saying uh, regular season record further in the playoffs? What's that <laughs> word? Stipulation do season in a vacuum, what team is okay. better? Like, what cool. team is better? You just think they're better. It's as simple as cool, that. Cool, cool. I like that. Let's okay. Do it. Will the Falcons be better than these NFC teams next season? First name, the 49ers. No. no. They won't be. I agree. The Green Bay Packers. Ooh. No. It's Ooh, a conversation. That's a, that's a good conversation. I would say no. I'm gonna Unless no. Jordan has a regression, which would suck. Oh, that's not going to happen. You know that's not going to happen. I agree. You better watch no. your mouth. No, I'm saying, no. unless he has it a regression, he, they should not. They just signed Xavier McKinney. I know. And, and Josh, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Yeah. That was crazy. The Packers will be better than the Falcons. I, I'm picking the Packers. Rams. No. No. I'm going to say no. Oh, it like could Rams. happen. I would I would probably still lean the Rams, but it they've could made happen. some improvements to the offensive line. They've gone and and they added depth to the uh, to the DB position as well. They fixed their gaps. I'm going with the Rams. They signed Darius Williams, who was cut from the Jaguars. Now the secondary doesn't look awful. They signed Jonah Jackson from the Lions. Jonah Jackson. Yes, they who last Dotson. year wasn't that mm-hmm. good, but I think with the Rams, I mean, you take Sean McVay. Shit, Kevin Dotson. He has done such a great job. Yeah, he's Kevin done such a great job developing. Uh, what, they traded a day three pick for yeah. him into one of the best guards in the NFL. I'm gonna go with the Rams here. I'm gonna go with the Rams if they're healthy. I think they'll be better. The Cowboys. I feel like the I Cowboys have. regular season, yeah, they're dogs. Regular Cook. season, Cook. I'll take the Cowboys. They have made zero moves. They've done nothing. They they're scaring done nothing. me. They haven't. Or regular season, Bayless, all in. Oh. My ass. I'm gonna still ass. say no. I'm gonna go with the Falcons. I think they'll be better okay, than the Cowboys. Okay, this is good. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're fading your, the the Cowboys. I, I'm going. I'm glad you're off that way. I'm proud of you. It's it's one year wonder for the Cowboys. It's Captain Kirk. He did it twice. Huh? He did it twice. Was it? He was in two years. It was two years in a row. Okay. I think the Cowboys last year was just loud about it. Yeah, last year he was more louder than the year before. Yeah. Cowboys will find a way to be good in the regular season again. For sure. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. They should win 11 so, games. No, the Falcons will not be better. The Vikings. With no. Sam Darnold? No. No. I would pick the Vi- Falcons. I would pick the Falcons, too. I'm going to pick the Falcons. Yes, they will be better. It's the I quarterback th- for me. If you look at the Vikings' talent, oh if they actually had a quarterback yes. that I trust. Well, if they had, like, Kirk Cousins. I, wait, yeah, if they had the guy they just lost. But you told me, <laughs> Sam Darnold. I think Sam Darnold will play well with the Vikings. But you trust Sam is but what I... I know what Sam Darnold is. Sam Darnold is not Kirk flip. Cousins. It is so such a you coin flip. Game to game, Sam. it might be a coin flip with Sam. What do you mean? You said if they had a quarterback, I trust. But I thought you trusted Sam. You did fool us. No, I think Sam Darnold will play well with the Vikings. You trust him. He's not good as Kirk Cousins. No, that's obviously. What I'm no, no, but that's, you said that's if, simple. But no, you said <laughs> if they had a quarterback, I could trust. But I thought you trusted yes. with the, with the Vikings right now. Mm. You have Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, Aaron Jones, no, TJ Hawkinson. Amazing talent. Hawkinson the, coming the train, off the The train, the train down, and please. wheels. The train and wheels on Sam Darnold will be put on mm-hmm. to where 
He will have good God, statistics. I hope not. I pray to God. God. Let him lose. Sure, you're you saw Nick Mullins? They let him lose. Yeah, Brother, you're not, you're you're not know. understanding my analogy. I am. They will, have some the, fun. The training Jeez. wheels. The I training know. wheels. It's beautiful the gar, outside. The guardrails on him. He will not be asked to go above and beyond the offense. He will execute what Kevin O'Connell wants him to execute. Mm. And I think you if he does him. that, he'll have, he'll have success. Well, what if, what if you get into games where... That's not available. Oh, he'll stay you know, up. for for a for a <laughs> short period of time, Josh Dobbs looked good, and then he got figured out. Dobbs I think sanity, Darnold can Legendary. keep it up for much longer than Josh Dobbs. I think Darnold's better, better than Josh. Better trust him, yeah. but no, you know, oh. I don't trust him as much as Kirk Cousins. I mean, I'm I'm sure. no, no, no. Would? I don't trust him as much as you trusted Daniel Jones last season. Oh, it's not right. Oh. ACL. Fifteen oh. passing touchdowns, breakout there season. Just remember, that. We're Just remember. We're and we're Sam back. Darnold's better than Daniel uh, Jones. Uh, he ha- no, oh, he has more playoff wins than you trust, do in the last decade. You know what? I trust Sam Darnold more uh-huh. to go. have better stats than Daniel Jones next season. Okay. You want to make that bet? We made one last season. We can do it this season. I don't want to make that bet. Wondell Robinson's number one option for him. No, I'm not making that bet, but. My my question wasn't to 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 try and get you. That's not what I'm trying to do. That here. is what you're trying to do. No, but you simply said, if they had a quarterback I could trust, you didn't say compare to Kirk. But I know you're feeling towards Sam. But well, there's a difference. That's Kirk is doing. a top ten quarterback. Absolutely. Sam Darnold at his ceiling is going to be the 18th or 20th you, best quarterback. You, you drop TikTok videos, Instagram reels about Sam Darnold. That's the only yeah, reason I'm I, wondering. Like, yes, I trust Sam to revitalize his career mm-hmm. if he plays with these offensive weapons and in this no, system. For sure. he I trust yeah. Sam to play well in this environment. Good. Not nice. I trust him to be to, a to franchise. Be fair, no, to be fair, fair almost any quarterback who would have went to Minnesota, but I would have been like, this is going to be a season. great year. We're only yes, talking about this next season, aren't we? It is very Isn't telling. Isn't that the question? That's offensive. It is. It is. It is telling that the Vikings, Kevin O'Connell said, Sammy Boy, Sam, come, we come want over you. here. We, we want you. I mean, if Kevin O'Connell trusts him, one of the better offensive minds in the game, why shouldn't you? He doesn't have another option right now. This is the only option. Mm, man. He just had, he had, it's a one year deal. Now, let me ask you a question. So much is this trust more they telling signed on for the one rookie, year. Is this telling on the rookie quarterbacks that they said, hey, I'd rather draft, I'd rather pick up Sammy? Well, I, I think rookie quarterbacks still, still, the, yeah, yeah, still in the still discussion. I think it is still in the cards. It's only a one year deal. I, I think uh, the Falcons will be better <laughs> than the Vikings next year. <laughs> The AF, the NFC North, I uh, excuse me, is shaping out to be one of the better divisions in football. Mm. Yeah, because the Bears are about to be like that. Do we yeah, have any more teams good. on the side? We do. Yes, we have more teams. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, we're gonna Falcons. keep skipping this team, but uh the Falcons. Uh, I I think the Buccaneers are still gonna be a respectable team. I'll lean Falcons though. I'm going with the Falcons too. That's not nothing. Yeah. Th- that's huge. The, and the moves they've made in free agency really have just been re Bringing their guys back. To yeah. be fair, that was some of their best players. they would lose a lot of guys. That was a concern. Mike, Baker, Levante, they it all was. came back. Shout out to Mike, man. Never in doubt, man. Definitely doubt. Legend. The <laughs> Seattle Seahawks. Okay, we're going to keep skipping this team. I would uh, take the Falcons. Falcons. I'm going to go Falcons also. Mike McDonald didn't commit to naming Gino the week one starter or the franchise starter, however he worded it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think he still starts. I was surprised probably uh, Patrick be, Queen wasn't wise. a Seahawk. That shocked me. Everybody going to rivals. Maybe Mike McDonald with the money. Maybe you saw Lamar's funny tweet. He's a Roquan merchant. You're dead to me. <laughs> the Seahawks. I think there's a there's a world they can actually be good. I'm gonna go with the Falcons though. The Lions. 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 No, I'm gonna go with better. the Lions. And then the last team, the Philadelphia Eagles. Took you so fucking long. <laughs> I would be Christ. taking the Eagles still. The Eagles, brother. The Cowboys, the Cowboys won the division they last need, year. That means it's time for the they Eagles don't to have win it again. Linebackers. Are we going to talk about how the Eagles have fumbled this free agency? They don't have key? a secondary Low key. Linebackers and DBs are still a huge We're concern. We're going to do all that in the draft. I'm praying. We are, so you're relying on rookies to come in when and, have and you, turn around your when, defense. When is there ever a reason not to trust Howie? Answer the question. Legitimately. You can't. You know why you can't? Because you can always trust. He drafted Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson. <laughs> that was one move. <laughs> Everyone you, makes a mistake. You, wait, stop, Everyone makes stop, a mistake. He drafted the Cleveland Browns. Stop! 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 You didn't. You, you fucked up. <laughs> I'm not Howie Roseman. No, no, you're not. I'm not but an NFL GM. You was like, this is the move. Nah, Jalen Rager, one of them was sending me tape that he's good. You and Joel was not the only one. There was a lot of Jalen Rager lovers out there. This guy Rivers acting. This guy Rivers acting like Jalen Rager is my wide receiver one. No, he was. You defended that pick. He was depressed, and I was being a good friend trying to uplift him. Yo, he's not that bad. He's not that bad. That's what friend. I was he never lied to be that bad. And I said, and I said, listen, he's not terrible. To be fair, like twenty teams passed up on Jettis. That I'm was all, and, uh, we bounced back, man. Broncos one of them. I mean, look address, at you look at your linebackers yeah. right now. Yeah. That's a Howie Roseman decision. One hundred percent. 
Yeah. He'll fix it. Nicobe Dean. Look at our offense. He's drafted and he's not paying down. Offense is crazy. Offense is offense nuts. Brother, it's so awesome. Oh yeah, you expect the quarterback to have an above ninety pass rating this year. Wasn't that wasn't the case last season? But hey, brother, man, you expect it this season. You you're not even a Jalen Hurts guy. Yeah, he's but nice. now you're just doing a little he's too not. much. So the teams I named: the Packers, Rams, Cowboys, Eagles, Seahawks, Lions, Vikings, Bucks. He's gone. We can say out of the seven teams, about four of them, the Vikings are better than mm-hmm. right. The Buccaneers, the, the Vikings, the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. And maybe the Cowboys, you know, I, I think they're definitely a tier two, tier three regular NFC. Se- team. Regular season, I see the Cowboys having more wins, but Falcons win the division. They can win a playoff game. I don't know if Dallas can. What number is Kirk about to wear? Is he about to wear eight? He's wearing P- eight. Pitts was tweeting about maybe going back to his college number. He should. There's he no way he can disrespect Kirk Cousins and not let him get number eight. I mean, he's on. Kirk's going to throw him a little bit, throw him here you go. Sure. I would never throw a man money for either that. Jersey you, you go. You're gonna throw me some splash, but you're also gonna throw me the rock. That Kirk contract is also. It's basically a two year deal. It's a hundred million guaranteed. Um, it's the Daniel Jones contract. Yeah, very similar. Mm-hmm. A little bit more money, of course. Um, so yeah, I, think, my I boy. think it's really, really fun for Atlanta. <laughs> now that's why I, I think there's little to no risk involved with signing Kirk, because at face value it's a four year deal, but you're only committed to Kirk for two years realistically. I would like the Falcons, knowing that they have Kirk for this amount of time, to also draft a quarterback, though. Even if it's in the second round or the third round, drafting a guy that can sit and learn so you can have an option after Kirk is not on your team anymore. Because this is the time to do it. You know, you got a guy that somebody can learn behind. You know, the Jordan Love method. And I know Vikings fans weren't happy to see Kirk go, but it could be a blessing in disguise because... We could say how great Kirk is. He is, you know, top 10 quarterback, if not right there, however you have him. But year in and year out, we went into the season and none of us ever had the Vikings as like Super Bowl contenders, right? I think we all realized there'd be a really good team. But with Kirk Cousins, it is a bit hard to see them kind of get over that hump unless you have just a really great team around him. That's defense, offense, offensive line, coaching staff. Everything around him has to be really damn good to get to that Super Bowl. So, I don't want to say it's a blessing in disguise because it seems disrespectful for what Kirk has done to that organization. He's been sensational there. But it is a chance for Minnesota kind to reset, possibly get a higher upside quarterback. We know you got Coach Wright. You got the the weapons there. They made some upgrades on defense. Honestly, you know, Kevin O'Connell and Brian Flores, one of the best head coaches slash offensive play caller and defensive coordinator in the NFL. Other quarterback moves that happen. Baker returned to the Bucs. Three years, 100 mil. Russell Wilson signed with the Steelers. One-year vet minimum. It's one of the best Sam Darnold the signed with the Vikings one year, 10 mil. Jacoby Brissett going to the Patriots one year, 8 mil. Gardner Minshew to the Raiders two years, 25 mil. And those are all the quarterbacks that change places. Let's start with Russ. No Tyrod Taylor. Why don't you mention Tyrod? Him? He's not going to start. These are like he might if Aaron Rodgers is going to be the vice president. <laughs> yeah, we can mention Tyrod Taylor <laughs> with the Jets. Starting quarterback. We got the best quarterback in the tri state area. Yeah, good for you. Cool. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor. Okay. Um, Last season, at least. You think he's better than Daniel Jones, Tyrod? The tri-state area includes Philadelphia. Does it? Yes. Hey, listen. I know I'm usually a smart guy, and I appreciate you staring. I don't know right now. You don't know? Tri-state, does that include, was that Pennsylvania, I think it's Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey. Damn, he fried? I think so. But if it's tri, wouldn't it be just three states? Listen, I hope I cooked, but I'm pretty sure. Riv, be smart on a podcast, please. The New York Tri-State area, which includes part of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Oh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. is sometimes included in this usage of the term. We're here. Is it Philadelphia? Close. Is Philadelphia the sometimes? They're they're the Philadelphia Tri-State area. So they have their own Tri-State mm. area, which includes Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. I cooked. Oh my god! We're here. Heard but that's, you. That's not our Tri-State. I was no, talking about our said, Tri-State said tri- area, which New Jersey. He says sometimes they include themselves. Anyhow, I give yes. Riv. Some partial credit. Well done, bro. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, I'll talk about Tyra the- last year was good. He was yeah. solid. He was uh, solid. I'll, I'll talk about the obvious. Russell Wilson to the uh, to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Boring. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the best deals of the offseason. I'm not even exaggerating. You get a veteran quarterback for 1.1 <laughs> million. No, the, the money. That's crazy. The money, the, the, the straight value wise. No, so for, value for the wise, value. Yes. Solely value. Listen, we don't know what Russ is in terms 1. of talent. 1. Oh my. No, no, he's not. All right, all right. He's getting paid $37 million from us this upcoming season, which is yeah. why he was like, yo, y'all can give me dirt and we're cash. Mm. You know how much that fucking hurt me? <laughs> yeah, how much that fucking hurt me? But listen, <laughs> I want the best for him. I hope that he plays well. I have no hate in my heart for that man. Uh, but that is a, a very firm deal for the Steelers because upside, you have a very solid starter 
that can be better than your current option. Careful Kenny with Pickett. those words. Eh? I know. I what, are those, what, are the, what are the odds that Russell Wilson... Did I say anything crazy there just to make no, sure? No, no, no. Solid, solid starters. starters. Just to make sure you know. the most I'll Nothing give you. nuts. What are the odds that Russell Wilson is better than Deshaun Watson this upcoming season? He was better last year. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> um, listen, f- fucking fans still ride for Deshaun, man. They, do. they ride for Deshaun. I mean, you got Deshaun. your boy Judy now. I mean, they, he has guys there. And Joku, we saw with Joe Flacco what he can be. So cool Amari Cooper was a dog. Nick Chubb, God willing, back. back day one. Shit, and I don't now know, you have bro. Jerry Judy. I, I really don't know. The don't ceiling know of Deshaun is obviously higher, yeah, but the Kirk, floor is kind of so both bad. feel like, oh, it No, I feel ugly. like the floor for Deshaun it's off last of season is. Horrible. I know, but the floor for Russ is also not good. Was last Better year his floor? Or are we floor. saying first year? First Russ year was, was probably his floor, but that okay. was also terrible coaching. That was calling. terrible coaching. Well, the floor is what he was against the Texans three interceptions, but one of the chances to take a lead in a playoff race. I'm going to be honest. That's still one of my favorite Russ games. I don't care how bad and Shocking. sad that sounds. That he was letting that shit rip. And throw interceptions. First I, I time he was doing that as a Bronco. Because uh, Russell Wilson, one year vet minimum, <laughs> right? If you were to grade this move, for the Steelers. Yeah. Like, what is this move? Getting Russell Wilson uh, in for the vet minimum. What's the grade? C. C plus. I think he's a better option. That's what up. I agree with. There's people out here that's telling me it's an A move. Oh, because I the got, Steelers, I got right Steelers gave fans, nothing Joel. for him. I got Steelers okay, yeah, fans uh, telling me they could Yikes. win the division. <laughs> They said that every year. I feel like, like though, in a I'm division, I hate that you Lamar had to Jackson, out them like that. They didn't deserve Joe that. Burrow. Talking to you, they're Jared. not winning the division. <laughs> and you know what pisses me <laughs> off, Dells? It's like the, the mindset of, oh, we're the Steelers. We gave up. We gave nothing to Russell Wilson. It's a one-year vet minimum. Yes, he's getting that money for a reason. It's because he's not good. He's not a starting level quarterback. He's a Aww. replacement he's level quarterback. He's only getting that contract he's because he's getting paid $37 million. He's a replacement level quarterback. Good. There are a few quarterbacks. He's right now. He oh, was shit. better than last season. One of those happens to be Kenny Pickett. But this move, all the sports books understand when you saw their odds to win it all before and after the Russ signing, it stayed the same. Why? Yeah, because Russ is not that they're the same. E- e- even with Kenny team. Pickett, with Russell Wilson, it's the same. Maybe it might look better with Russell Wilson, but ultimately, you're going to get the same result. Maybe make the playoffs by the skin of your teeth, get eliminated by a superior team, and that's going to be that. But this move, I understand they didn't give him anything to join their team, but it also does nothing for their ceiling. Well, let me ask you a question, though. What would you have wanted them to do to improve their ceiling? Not much was there to be had this just feels like a what, go all in on Kirk that wasn't real no but I feel like it's just the Steelers being like we got a big name kind of old veteran guy that once everyone knew as a great player and now he's not that great I don't I saw John tweet something but again what would you want them to do uh, That's what but I'm John basically John said tweet. like it's a it's like a signing that there's just like no ambition behind it it's, you know what I mean <laughs> I'm like be honest I'm happy that this happened to John because he was very vocal about <laughs> you know the, the Steelers and Giants have the same odds to win their respective division <laughs> Shout out to my G-Men, baby. Oh, shit. Plus 950 and plus 1,000. Yeah, this move does nothing. That's why, uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is, though. Russell's better than Kenny, so he that's is cool. better. The Just thing is, they got million, better at quarterback. A million dollars on your on your salary cap for a quarterback does not happen. I, I also just don't know how he's going to look in uh, Arthur Smith's offense, who Fair. primarily uses, not primarily, but heavily uses the middle of the field. He's I know not 2019 Tannehill. Or yeah, we've Tannehill. talked about, you know, how veteran quarterback like Tannehill, you got a run game, you Tannehill's got weapons with Arthur Smith that should work. But I think Russ was around 5 or 6% in terms of throwing over the middle of the field last season. I mean, it was one of the lowest in the leagues. And That's if you're not like utilizing that, 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 it's going to be tough to, to really succeed. They just ain't making enough moves to get better, man. That division is too tough. And you got Burrow coming back healthy, Deshaun, whatever he is. The Browns just, just got to the playoffs without him. So Listen, I do Baltimore. think the identity fits somewhat, right? Uh, they want to play through their defense. They want to run the ball. And they want to take deep shots down the field. I think this is going to be great for somebody like George Pickens. But for somebody like Deontay Johnson, who last year didn't get much looks, he's on the trade. He's block not going to get much looks in this offense. They've been with receiving Russell calls Wilson. on him. So who knows if he's on the team? I don't know. I feel like Deontay, because he still gets a lot of screen looks. He's going to be getting those types of bubble passes. That's kind of his game, obviously, running routes over the middle of the field. Not going to be seeing that much anymore. But I feel like I look at someone similar, Pickens and Judy. The two kind of remind me of of one another, which is why I have concerns for Pickens. But, yes, if he's going to be running a lot of deep shots, yeah, he's going to be I getting Pickens his, gives him more sun vibes. He does because Pickens is one of those guys who's like, ah. fuck it, just throw it up. Exactly. And that's what Russ is going to do with him. 
That's I think fun. it's I think it's actually pretty good for Pickens because he's going to get some of those opportunities he's that told. I don't know if Kenny Pickett was either told not to well, by Pickens Matt Cannon speedy, staff or just didn't. Decent route runner. But this is a different situation for Russ, who in every situation he had leverage, mm-hmm. whether with his contract or with his role on a team. And now you're with Pittsburgh and you're the least paid player on the team. You're easily expendable. Uh, you oh, kind shit. of. I think Deontay might have just got traded. Oh wow, Deontay Johnson. Deontay to the Panthers. Damn. Nice. Eagles like signed CJ Gardner Johnson, three years, thirty three million. Well, he's back. He comes home. back. Yeah. Hey, Deontay it's, Johnson to the Panthers. What the fuck did move. I just tell you? That's wow. What are the odds Deontay that happens right now? I know, right? Okay, All right, George Pickens. He's back. Pickens. back. That was what I just tell you. Trust in Howie, man. But um, they. <laughs> but yeah. Listen, with Russell Wilson, I think it'll look a little bit better, but ultimately it doesn't raise their ceiling. We'll talk about the Deontay news in a bit because I Mahomes think it is just restructured his deal. That's my boy. Fucking Christ, man. Yo, That's my boy. Fuck? Create, create, yeah. create an additional $21.6 <laughs> Curtis Samuel, baby. Cap. Curtis Samuel. This guy. Calvin Ridley? Or LeJerry Sneed extension. Mm. You're cooking. Yes. You're cooking. Yes. Uh, what was the deal for a seventh? Next quarterback, Sam Darnold, seven. signed with the Vikings. He's a Bronco. For a seven. One seven. year, $10 million. Mm. I've been vocal about this. I think Sam Darnold in Minnesota will, will thrive with the offense weapons they just had. They just added in Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones on the stretch of last season was so awesome for Green Bay. I think he'll carry that over into Minnesota. I think this is a chance for Darnold to revive his career. It, like... Baker Mayfield did with Tampa Bay. I don't think Darnold has been given a fair shake in the NFL, whether it's been with the New York Jets, going to the Carolina Panthers, and in Carolina, the Niners, the Niners is a backup. Oh, so, uh, oh, really? It's not like he was a starter. Oh, he thought uh, he was Yeah, good. but when he played, he played better than the, the MVP to you, some people. You could argue he league. didn't have the, the fair shake in training uh, camp. It was just like, nah, this guy. Yeah, he had the fair guy. shake, and then he got the former third overall pick shipped out of town because he won a quarterback oh, spot. That's, that's, that's what he shit. did. <laughs> that's what you did. That's what he did. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> but with Sam, Sammy Boy, his best receiver with the Jets was Robbie Anderson. There was a year we had 36-year-old Frank Gore, uh, Jermaine Curse. I mean, our, our receivers were totally awful. In Carolina, when CMC was healthy, that first year he was there, in the first three games, he was solid. CMC goes down, and then outside of DJ Moore, there really isn't any options. And I feel like people paint Darnold's entire tenure in Carolina as bad. But in 2022, he had seven touchdowns and three interceptions, 92.6 passer rating. He played well and gave the Panthers a a shot to win that division down the stretch of the season. And overall, his win-loss record in Carolina was 8-9. and So you're telling me he's going to the Vikings with these offensive weapons, with a defense that plays solid. I I think he'll have good stats, and this is a chance for him to finally prove himself as a quarterback. (laughs) (laughs) What, Riff? Why are you laughing? Did somebody fart over there? No. Oh, I thought I heard a noise. Uh, listen, Sam Darnold is going to be put in a position to succeed for the first time in his career. I'm with you, Joel. Uh, that being said, got to see it to believe it. No, 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 um, no which way about it. I'm not going to lean one way over the other. I'm going to stay pretty even keel. I don't think Sam Darnold is as bad as some people like to say. You look at his time in Carolina, especially on what with his overall. Like if you had like just a throw overall, a Madden overall on it, seventy two. Ooh. That's what I was thinking in my head, actually. Brother shit. Okay. Um, but with Jettis, with Addison, with hockey, is crazy. with Aaron Jones, agreed. However, with these weapons around him, with a great offensive play caller in Kevin O'Connell, he can be successful. Uh, he can play at an average to maybe slightly, slightly above, if we're going to think super optimistically, because of the supporting cast around him. I think that he's got the tools to to do a fine job as just a regular run-of-the-mill uh, bridge quarterback, and that's really all you can ask for right now in Sam Darnold. Good move for Minnesota because this allows their options for the future to still be up in the air, and they have at least some type of security blanket. I think there's a world... I, like, I think Minnesota is probably one of the few teams where if you, like, throw any quarterback there, they should, you know, play relatively well. I mean, you have the best receiver in the league. You have one of the best rookie receivers last year. You have TJ Hawkinson, one of the best tight ends. Offensively, you have a great play caller. So it's like, I don't think saying Sam Donald's going to play well is it's like a crazy take or nothing. I think we expect him to play relatively you well. You trust him? Do I trust him? Nah, I think he'll fumble when it's like time to oh, fumble wow. for sure. I but can't wait for the Sam Donald midseason system quarterback debates. 
the stats are going to look good. I, I agree. You know, I think the stats are going to be what the stats are going to be. I think when you have that type of talent, you know, there's no way you can play that bad. You know, I think if you do play that bad. The type of talent that Darnold also possesses. Have you seen his 300-yard games? Oh, my uh, God. Two plus touchdowns? He has six talent of them, actually. Have you, seen, have you seen the game where he you know, dueled head to head with funny. Aaron Rodgers? Talk to me. I find it funny because uh-huh. he shitted on Purdy. Shit. For doing, for having the... No, spread this, his cheeks and yeah, diarrhea. for having this uh-huh. great team. And now that Darnold has a great team, it's all, yeah, he's going to do this. Well, I'm not going to say that Sam Darnold is more valuable than you. Jordan Addison. I was ready I'm not going to say that. Yeah, you, you told me to Brock Purdy is more valuable than Brandon Ayuk. I'm not doing that. I'm not saying he's more valuable than the he best could. receiving option. If Sam Darnold goes out and puts up the numbers that Brock Purdy did, you're not going to say he's more valuable than Jordan Addison? <laughs> he 100% no, no, is. Let me ask you a question. Come on, bro. Like, like, what are you doing here? Like, God forbid both this happens. No, I mean, he's the best, best receiver in the world. But let me ask you a question. Brandon Ayuk's a top five receiver. This, this no, is, he's glad. This, this is, he's not. He's top, 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 top ten. Top five is crazy. Let me help you out real quick because this is easily how we shut down this most valuable shit. If Brandon Ayuk gets hurt, do the Niners still have a chance to win? A what? A game. A game? A game. A game, yes, not a Super Bowl. Right. Hell no. If Brock Purdy gets her in that game, what's the chances of them winning that game as opposed to Brandon Ayuk? If Sam Darnold steps in, they have got a chance to win that game too. <laughs> you you should have known that was coming. Yeah, yeah they do. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think that up. actually Sam Darnold makes that fourth and two throw oh my God. to Brandon Ayuk in a Super Bowl. To win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. You, have you seen Darnold's quick release? You're not, you're not, Sam Darnold has you're that quick release, buddy. <laughs> You're insane. Oh, shit. We're back. Oh, We're shit. all the way back. It's only March. Will Sam Darnold start the whole oh, year for the Vikings? I think he should. Uh, do they draft a quarterback? Do you trust that that can happen? Yes. I think they draft a quarterback, whether it's day do one, two, or three. they draft Jaden Daniels? They'd have they to have trade to trade up. up. They'd have to move nine. Or they pick 12, right? They're 12. Or 11. For me, it's either they trade up or they're going to draft J.J. McCarthy. I'm Ooh. not. I'm a fan of J.J. Shout McCarthy if he Broncos. goes to Kevin O'Connell. We're really going to do something in this draft that's going to be yeah, fun, yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah, I hope you're right. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm hoping that's the case too. And I know you're praying against it, even though I've been here standing happy for the Eagles. That being said, wait, what am I praying for? Our downfall. I don't think about you guys. You guys, guys already <laughs> fell. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, I, cook. <laughs> I don't think about you guys to fail to uh, pray on your downfall. Okay, I just good. watch you guys. Fail. I'm actually hoping that you guys are see, look, he's get insane. rebuilt up. Me too. Oh, see, right. Me too. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care whether you do. I got, I got a lot of stock got, in Sean what? Payne still being no, a me good, too. competent yeah, NFL mind coach. I hope if he doesn't, that'd be cool. There's only like a few teams I really pray on their downfall. Let's go. Oh. Dallas, for sure. Valid. 100%. The Jets? Nah. Uh, just Beach Dallas. Y'all. Who? Beat y'all. <laughs> yeah. It's really just yeah. Dallas and the Giants. Always. Okay. Fuck I can respect They're that. so useless. I don't yeah. really pay attention to Yo, them. you really think about it. The NFC East is the best division in football history. Because there's just never a consecutive winner? No, well, that. There's so much parity. We're, we're probably the most competitive. The most about. winning. The commanders have chips. Yeah. Dallas has chips. Eagles have chips. Recently, thank God, it saved you guys' legacy. We have appearances. And the Giants are one of the most historic teams in football. Don't the commanders have like three? Yeah, very early. I was post say Doug Williams, legend. Oh, yeah, post it's only been the Giants and the bad. Eagles to win. It's been three total for them. Well, I mean, the Patriots yeah, yeah, have those, all the those Giants, two Bulls, man, because these last this last decade has been pretty ugly. You know what's crazy? The NFC is getting fun again, man. It is. It is. Like, it is NFC fun. is getting fun again. We're starting to get some legit teams. You know, Atlanta, Detroit's here. You got my boys. Dallas is still around. You know, Green Bay's coming up. Yes. Last year it was fun. I thought it was cool, but I feel like the, the South, is that the South with the mm-hmm. Tampa? Yes. Mm-hmm. It was just making it so like, ah. That's terrible. Yeah. But Tampa Bay they, In the upset, playoffs, they, they cooked up. Quote, unquote. But even though we all had the Eagles losing. Yeah. No, in the playoffs, they cooked up. But in the regular season, they were so mad. They were. You know? They were, but they, they, what is it? They were... Good, then they were mid for a while, but then they clutched up towards the end of the season. Now I'm with you. Jacoby Brissett signed with the Patriots one year, eight mil. And then Gardner Minshew signed with the Raiders two mil, 25. Two I years, 25. I really liked Gardner to, to the Raiders. More this, than Brissett to Patriots. I mean, I really don't care personally, just with respect look to at, it's the Patriots. It's last not about Jacoby. Facts. He puts up numbers. Jacoby, I think Brissett is a better Jacoby player. with the command. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, but I just say that in the idea of I have no expectation for the Patriots this upcoming season. Yeah. Not really do I have expectation for the Raiders, but they were at least a, a respectable team. Uh, they obviously were a solid defense. You, you saw how they rallied around Antonio Pierce towards the end of the season, but they didn't have a good quarterback. They had Aiden O'Connell. Jimmy G obviously got hurt, and he had to come in and do a job. Obviously wasn't it. Garner Minshew was able to do a decent enough job of just managing the game. Obviously, this was with Shane Steichen, an w- amazing play caller. That's going to be drastically different in, in Las Vegas. But the weapons are there. Jacoby Myers, Devontae Adams, 
We'll see, uh, Zamir White is now going to be their RB1, which I, I am excited about. I actually think he's a decent talent. Uh, I'm probably anticipating they probably do something with the offensive line over there with the pick that they do have. But Gardner Minshew wasn't a bad pick. Another, again, another bridge quarterback, and that's fine. Yeah, they're cutting uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. I think he's going to be a free agent tomorrow yes. once the, the league year opens. So Jimmy G is going to be another quarterback out in the market. The Raiders have have made moves to win now. Even their fans, we've talked about this in the past, think they're ready to win now. Gardner Minshew isn't the prototypical win now quarterback. He's what you mentioned, Drew. He's he's a bridge quarterback, and there still hasn't really felt like there's been a pa- a plan in, in place for the Raiders to have that franchise quarterback ever yeah. since Derek Carr walked. Which, looking back in hindsight, probably was the better move rather than paying him so much money because we saw Aiden O'Connell last season. He's not the answer. He's a, a backup level quarterback at best. There were some games that Chiefs game where he didn't even throw the ball what ten times and they, yep. they ended up winning. Um, so Gardner Minshew, I think, is at minimum better than Aiden O'Connell, but they got to one way or another figure out some sort of long-term answer that gives you some more upside because you got Patrick Mahomes there, Sean Payton, and now Jim Harbaugh in charge of Justin Herbert. you got a ton of talent and some great coaches there. And the Raiders, no matter how good your roster is going to be, if you're putting out Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew each week, you're not going to have much of a shot to do you know, big-picture things. What I love about Brissett going to New England is I think now it gives the the Patriots, sorry, um, they don't have to force a move. You can draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick number three, and you don't have to draft a quarterback. Not that really? Brissett is the long-term answer, but right now the Patriots should be in the position of acquiring talent. They re-signed a ton of their guys, Kendrick Bourne, Michael Unwenwu, on the offensive side of the ball. They released Devontae Parker. Parker. They released Devontae Parker, but Joker. you need a oh. pass catcher. Eagle. Yeah, he sucks. Maybe they draft Drake Shout May Devontae. or Jaden Daniels and you sit behind Brissett for a year. But now that's not a dire move. You're going into the draft with a quarterback option that can give you steady quarterback play. And I think <laughs> Brissett is one of those quarterbacks that, while he is a bridge, you're not going to complain about his level of play. He can play well for you, and you don't have to force your hand with – a move to just draft a quarterback if they don't like it. It's all about who they like. And if they don't like any of these quarterbacks outside of Caleb, then now you just draft Marvin Harrison Jr., who we all know is a shoe in to be one of the better receivers in the league. Yes. Uh, I like that move a lot for the Patriots. I, I still can't believe that Deontay only went for a six round seven. pick. Yeah, no, it was uh, a swap. Uh, oh, okay. You know, a six for a seven. Because it, it was Dante Jackson. Jackson. Dante yeah. Jackson. Involved. But I mean, I'm looking at, I have a few Panthers fans that I follow said he was going to get cut or they were expecting him to be cut. He was not someone that was, you know, on their plan. Got like it. That's what I saw. That the Steelers got back a seventh. That's what it was, correct? Yeah. But yeah. at the very least, the Steelers aren't competing with other teams to sign him. But, Joel, the one thing I'll say is I saw them, they, they traded away Mac Jones. They brought in Jacoby Brissett on a one-year deal. To me, it just more emphasized the fact to me that they are going to be going quarterback at three. I do see it being one, two, three. I would love if Marvin Harrison would be the third uh, player taken in this draft because I do firmly believe that it makes the most sense for the Patriots to take a wide receiver. They have not had a great elite talent at the wide receiver position in years. This is finally their op. It's smacking them in the face. But with Jacoby, with no long-term answer, like you mentioned, signing him on a one-year deal, to me, it just sticks in my mind. One year, this quarterback that they're going to draft is going to sit behind Jacoby. They're going to learn. They're going to hmm. try and do as much as they can to 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 be ready for the upcoming season after that. You don't think, because they signed a couple of uh, offense, like they re-signed Henry, they re-signed Kendrick Bourne, they brought in Antonio Gibson. So they brought it, like they kept some of the offense and they brought in a, <laughs> No, they're running back. They resign on one rule. Yeah. I'm so ready for Marvin Harris to go to Arizona, I'll be honest. Yeah. Like, I'm praying for it. Well, that, all the reports you've seen were if Jaden Daniels is there at three, they're not interested. Uh, I don't, Patriots. Yeah. I, I don't recall anything about Drake May reports, but I, I have read multiple reports saying that if Jaden Daniels is there at three, that's that's not their guy. Interesting. Well, right now we're in a stage of the draft where it feels like uh, there are reports in so many different yeah, that's directions. True. That's true. Drake May is getting shit on, uh, I guess, right now nitpicked. And um, who knows if that's just teams wanting his value to drop so he can fall. You know, we don't know. It's just draft season. Everything's foggy. Justin Fields, whenever we talked about quarterbacks heading into the offseason, he was at the top of the list for, you know, a potential target for teams. Now we see the Bucks got an option, the Steelers, the Vikings, the Patriots, the Raiders, the options are running out for Justin Fields. The Giants signed Drew Locke, so now they have Daniel Jones and Drew Locke probably not going to go after Fields at this point. The three teams that I see left are 
the Broncos, the Commanders, and maybe he goes to Seattle and competes for the job or sits behind Geno. But the options are running out for him to be a starter next year. I'm not overly surprised. Can't when, worry, when we did Can't our, them all. When we did our <laughs> predictions, I felt as if Atlanta was destined for Kirk Cousins. I felt like Pittsburgh was going to be where Russell Wilson ended up. Baker Mayfield will be back in Tampa Bay. But Justin, I never felt as if one of these teams that felt like they needed a needle mover would go after Justin Fields. There's a reason why the Bears are moving on from Justin Fields. Look at the numbers last year. Sure, they are. he had his career high in passing yards, most touchdowns. He did miss some time. And as a rusher where he still was pretty great, it wasn't obviously at the level of the year before that where he was great. He was elite, put up one of the best uh, quarterback rushing seasons that we've ever seen. But as a passer, which matters most in the National Football League, obviously at the quarterback position, he hasn't improved as much as you would like to see. And, and, and that's been evident in the numbers. It's evident when you watch him play. It's just not what you want, especially when you're trying to invest future. You're, you understand that his contract is coming up. You're going to have to extend him. There's a lot of factors that go into investing in on Justin Fields right now. And you're right. I, I do think that the Broncos are in this conversation, but legitimately a team that it could be in conversation to, to bring him in is the team that I initially guessed would be the Washington Commanders. But, but what really does that make a lot of sense if they stick around that too? Not really. So there was be have to be things that happen with the Commanders for them to try and, and make a move to acquire Justin Fields on their team. Of course, that would be trading the number two overall pick who knows if that happens uh that that would be pretty crazy and pretty nuts honestly if you ask me however Justin Fields is finding himself in a tough situation and it, it could be one of those where he gets traded has to sit has to learn a little bit before he has his time in the in the sun again but options are running now and I really can't say I'm overly surprised because at the most important trait that he needs to have at the quarterback position he simply does not have it on the level of these other quarterbacks. Tough. It was really a tough year for Justin Fields to be put in the quarterback market because there were so many veteran quarterbacks who were out there and available, you know, from big name guys like Kirk Cousins to lower tier guys or one year guys like Sam Darnold and Jacoby Brissett. So when you're looking at teams that were ready to compete or maybe wanted a veteran presence, they were probably going to go after that player first because you don't give a draft pick for him and yep. the contract is. Probably going to be a one or like Minshew two years, but most of the money is going to be guaranteed in that first year. And then if you do trade for Justin Fields, we don't know what the draft compensation is for months leading up to free agency. It's been a day two pick, a second round pick, yep. maybe a third. That's a pretty <laughs> high price for someone that is possibly just on a one year deal, right? This is the last or the fourth year of his rookie contract. They would have to make a decision on his fifth year contract, which is a 25, nearly $26 million cap hit. And Nearly, I don't think any team is going to trade for Justin Fields and pick up his fifth year option because he just hasn't been able to show, he hasn't shown enough as a quarterback. And on top of that, you have a pretty loaded quarterback class coming in the draft. Not only do you have three kind of superstar franchise like quarterbacks that are getting propped up in the top 10, but you have another kind of middle of the first round pick in JJ McCarthy. And you have a bunch of, of round two and round three guys that you could get and, and just spend a draft pick on, and you have them under control for three, four years for a lot less money. So Justin Fields, the upside's always been there. And I think we always get caught up in this. I get caught up in this where what could be with Justin Fields, the athleticism, the arm talent, it's really one of one in terms of what he can bring as a rusher and a passer. There's not a lot of dudes in the league that can do it. It's just he hasn't been able to consistently be a great passer, which is what you mentioned. And it's going to be difficult in the NFL to be a run first quarterback if you're not able to complete at least bare minimum, like 63, 64% of his passes, which throughout his career, he really hasn't been able to do. So I'm looking at these teams like New England, like Washington, perhaps that have either made other moves like Washington, bringing in Marcus Mariota. I think that's their backup. Yep. And they take the second overall pick on a quarterback or a team like New England, who has Jacoby Brissett, who's been there before. He's a New England guy. It's and on top of all of that. If you trade for Justin Fields, you already know the fan base is going to want to see him start. Yep. So if you have an idea, whether it's a rookie quarterback or someone you, you might like a bit more, you know there's going to be outside, pres outside pressure to start this guy because of the upside. You have something to add on, Riff? Yeah, I'll go. I thought you were going to go. You were excited. I saw your tweets. Um, I think this was probably the worst year for him to not be great. You know, I think with them getting the number one pick, that kind of put him in a tough position. I don't think nobody was going to pass up on Caleb in the end. I think also, like you mentioned, you know, 
teams picking up Gardner Minshew, you know, teams picking up Jacoby Brissett, like teams are going for the cheaper veteran route or the bridge quarterback route. It makes it just tough for his, you know, his play. And I think all the teams you're looking at, like Denver, Seattle, uh, maybe even Minnesota, you know, these teams, like, I don't, I doubt they trade in division. You know, I doubt that happens. And then with Denver, that probably seems to be the only realistic spot because they don't really have a quarterback to really play for them. But it's just a tough position being a Justin Fields fan because, you know, you want to see him play, you want to see him succeed. But at the end of the day, you got to kind of look at it and just say he did not perform well. You know, he since because he didn't perform well, they have the number one pick. Chicago, this offseason, has put themselves in a pretty comfortable position going into the draft, you know, picking up some good players on offense and defense. And with Fields, who I think Fields, you know, I just I saw this report earlier that conversations were heating up. And then Fields said, I think a month ago, like he was just going into the booth. He didn't want to listen to all the noise. It sucks to come out the booth and realize that nobody kind of wants you, which is now sitting there saying, where are you going to play next year? You know, how does that go for your mental and your psyche? Like, who am I going to play for? Who am I going to learn behind? Will he take the Geno Smith route and learn for a couple of years, then become a starter again? You know, will he have the Baker Mayfield where he can go somewhere, you know, get his career back on track? So it's definitely tough for Fields. And I think the path he's taken with Chicago, you know, them not developing him in the beginning, him not playing well, uh, towards the end, you know, them finally getting DJ Moore, but him not still having that consistent play as a passer that you want to see on a week to week basis. That kind of sucks for him, too. But I do think eventually he does find a you know, spot, hopefully a good spot. And hopefully he continues to play. Where do you want him to go? I would like him to go to Minnesota because <laughs> him and division. Jettas. Oh, man. Jettas has said, I don't know if it was recent, but you've seen that clip going around saying he wants Justin Fields more yeah, or less. I, I don't think know if that's old. If I want him to play. I think he can legit beat out Sam Darnold. In, in but I don't think camp. Chicago's training him in division. Yeah, Unless I don't the think Vikings that. are like, we'll give you a second round pick. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, I think Denver, just because they don't have, who does he have really to beat out in Denver, respectfully? Like, there's nobody. No, who, that would be my what quarterback. quarterback. do you have under contract? Jared Stidham. Right. Like, so I think he can play over no, Jared Stidham. He would be Stidham. my quarterback. But these I other two. Yeah, so I, I don't think you're paying Gardner Mitchell 25 mil to fight for a spot. You know what I'm saying? So I think he's going to start. That is backup quarterback, man. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Top end backup quarterback. I'll, I'll talk on that real quick about him to the Broncos. Uh, Sean Payton's big thing is that he wants his quarterback to win in the pocket. That's not Justin Fields. It's not Justin Fields. Yeah. It's simply not, which is why I can't see a future with Justin Fields as the Broncos quarterback. It would just be more turmoil. It would be a lot more arguing on the sidelines and a lot of people saying that you shouldn't be beating up on the kid when, in reality, his game is just hard to cater an offense around. You know, I think him not getting picked up speaks to a couple things. Number one, he's not a free agent. He's a player under contract that has to be traded. Correct. So that that means that a team has to throw a draft pick to the Bears' way. And maybe the Bears and other organizations are not seeing eye to eye on that. I've also heard, you know, some rumblings that possibly the Bears are still split between keeping fields and drafting Caleb, which I think it's blasphemy. I think they're going to draft Caleb, and that's 100% a decision. If, indeed, they already know they're going to draft Caleb— I feel like for them, the compensation they get back for Fields shouldn't matter much. And I think they should have traded him earlier if that was the case. But I also think that there's a dynamic here that NFL teams are just not that high on Justin Fields. And I think that's what we're seeing right now is that the rushing ability is elite. It's top of the line, but winning from the pocket, being accurate, going through progressions, you expected more improvement in those areas. His first two years in Chicago... I don't think he was put in a good situation. This past year, no excuses. You had a good offensive line. You had a good running game. You had a great wide receiver in DJ Moore. Darnell Mooney, we just seen him get paid 13 mil a year, three years, 39 mil to go sign with the Atlanta Falcons. So obviously he was valued across the league. Cole Komet, I think, is solid. So there's just no excuses for Justin Fields. That's really that's really just it. Trevor Lawrence is holding the 2020 quarterback draft back. class by a threat. By a threat. <laughs> exactly. Mac Jones was just traded to the Jaguars and is, is now Free backing Jones, up Trevor man. Lawrence. Zach Wilson and Trey Lance are arguably one of the two biggest busts at the quarterback position drafted that high. And now Justin Fields is going to move on from the Bears. <clears throat> he has not gotten scooped up by any team. No team is trading for him. And he likely is going to be a backup next season. So we're talking about four quarterbacks drafted in that first round that are now backups. Mm. Rev, just remember, Lance went for a fourth round pick. That's all I'm going to say. Fourth round pick. 
He got beat up by the last pick in the draft. Brock Purdy's generational. Fields is about to get beat up by Caleb Williams. Well, he might have got beat out by anybody, honestly. Nah, I see. That's a cop-out. Well said, bro. Good shit. I Great won. answer. Yeah. Nah, you think you think cooked. if they weren't the I first... I don't care what we think. I don't care the hypothetical. Nah, you're throw real, me. Though, and that, that little back and <laughs> yeah, forth, Rip got care, it. I don't care about the hypothetical. If, Fields, if they didn't have the number one pick, Fields is undoubtedly the starter next year. What would be the pick? Uh, like say, like say, it's, say it's not Caleb. Say they have a shot at May. If they or had Jayden. pick two if they, instead if, of pick one, they still they take, take Marvin. They're no, still, they take Marvin. Think they take Marvin? Think they take I Marvin? Think they still take May because it's I safe. A chance. It, Caleb is safe. Now I tell you, they had three. They're taking Marvin. I got a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. This quarterback draft class is awful outside of Trevor Lawrence. Do you think that it speaks to the quarterbacks being overdrafted or the situations they went to just weren't good? I think both. The situations that Zach went into was pretty terrible. Um, Trevor, of course, his first year with Urban, but he's bounced back. But then you look at uh, a situation like Mac Jones. I forgot who said it. Was it Orlovsky? Maybe it was Ryan Clark who said it was maybe one of the biggest mismanagements of a rookie quarterback we've ever seen, every young quarterback we've ever seen, where Mac Jones, his first year into the league, comes in, Pro Bowl season, whatever, uh, makes the playoffs. But he He plays plays super well. And then after that, the coaching is arguably the worst in the league. The weapons are arguably the worst in the league. Fast forward three years, now he's on a different team. Like, Mac Jones has proven that in structure with decent coaching and, and okay weapons, he could be a good quarterback. But they just gave him really no lifeline and said, we're going to put you out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, find your way back to shore. Um, and then Trey Lance, it's it's just he never really got an opportunity. Oh, God, let's cut it out. Oh, I mean, <laughs> let's just go through the Trey Lance timeline one more time. No, fuck <laughs> Maybe all these guys just weren't floor raisers, you know? Like, you know how we like to call it NBA guys who – can raise the team's floor. Maybe none of these guys, they needed to be in perfect situations. Trey was in a great situation. Unfortunately. The best situation out of all of them. Uh, by it far. Started that three injury. Okay. No, no, most yeah. definitely. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, horrible situation. Horrible. I still even think right now it's not that great of a situation. He did win a playoff game. But Davis. we look at it in hindsight, this team is still, it still has it's its ways to go. Still has its ways to go. Zach Wilson... A combination of of him not having the skill set, also the situation not being the best. Although, you know, it got a little better with Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. The offensive line had always been a question, that's fair, but it also was on him to be better, and he simply was not. Mac Jones, Joel just went through it perfectly. And Justin Fields, you look at the this past season, he should have been well better than what he was. They, you, you, We talked about coming into the season how he had the, the to be one of the... the the guys that was put to win the MVP the most in terms yeah, of that betting was that was a lot that was significantly crazy. But you get a great uh, to good great elite receiver in DJ Moore. You're supposed to take he's that great. jump, and he never did. He's great. Fringe elite. I don't like, I don't like how you did that. He's well, great. I only say good because yeah, other he's situations. Great. No, he's, he's great. great. He's, he's great, great. Okay. for sure. Sorry, who are you talking about? DJ, DJ Moore. Moore. DJ Moore. Oh, he's fantastic. He's, he's great. great. Oh, he is now. He's always been. Okay. He has. I wasn't just saying him. The as guy who just got traded for a seventh, he thought was better. Just no, sixth. 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 It was, first of all, ah, it was never, I think Enough. Deontay's better, DJ Moore's ass. I just thought they were on the same level. Bro, I'm going to push my agenda. So it's just. Um, but I wasn't just Watch referring what to Deontay DJ Moore. does with the actual quarterback. Just in terms of regular situations. <laughs> what if Deontay had Justin Fields? DJ Moore's had a breakout year with Justin. Never forget that. I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, fucking breakout Deontay's had. Like, like, do you want to know what this is? The good to great to elite? Like Deontay Johnson, nah, I take that on that. In the good to great, DJ Moore, and then elite, AJ Brown, Stephon Diggs. DJ man, love my guy. He'll have fifteen on yards next year. With, With Caleb? Caleb, yes. Jinx, he might. Yeah, fifteen's a lot, but he's gonna have a good season. Did he have thirteen on this year? He did. He had some times that ain't getting the ball. He, he missed a game or two. I think, uh, so. I'll say this: thir- a fifteen hundred is a lot of yards. Well, you gotta remember this year, last year, he had like two two hundred yard games. He did. So realistically, he had one. It was, was it 266, one? yeah. That was a Thursday night game? I guess Commanders, yeah. Then he had like, a, if it was two, that it was, was one 200, then it was like a big 180 game yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that. So he had some big games. So, you know, 1,500 ain't really hard, bro. He's an explosive receiver. He, he's an awesome receiver. He's like that. I love that guy. The running back carousel has now been completed. We mm-hmm. now know where all the running backs that were free agents Step one, man. have went. Prayers for JK. J.K. Dobbins. I mean, did, what did you expect? He's, he'll he's, get resigned. He's coming, I mean, he'll off, get he's coming off of so many injuries. I know, man, but he's, I still think he's talented. Honestly, I would love for the Ravens to resign and back up Derek. No. I would love that. No. Key and Mitchell. Key and Mitchell oh, fuck. They would just have a loaded backfield. Who needs a running back? Let's really think. You guys. <laughs> Not crazy. <laughs> what happened to Javante? 
He's still alive. He's no, he still he still has life. He still has life. He just doesn't have the same explosive. Drew was proper on Javante. He'd be that like was crazy. Javante he was nasty. fire. He was nasty. And he was Dells, fire. You know Dells. He always got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said top five running back. I think you top might ten. have. Not that you said top it five. It was him and Najee for that nine ten spot. No, I think you had him over Najee. Because his ability to catch in the uh, but, past game. No, but Najee runner. had a lot of receiving uh, receptions his rookie I season. I don't know. I think you had him over Najee. I'm not going to finna look at it, but. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I know it was 10, though. De- top five is nuts. So I'm going to go through this running back carousel. You guys tell me which move you like the most. Derek Henry went to the Ravens. Aaron Jones to the Vikings. Joe the Mixon game. traded to the Texans. Zach Moss to the, to the Bengals. Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. There we go. Austin Eckler to the Commanders. Tony Pollard to the Titans, DeAndre Swift to the Bears, Devin Singletary to the Giants, Gus Edwards to the Chargers, and Antonio Gibson to the Patriots. I'll say this. I like every move that you just said outside of Austin Eckler to the Commanders and DeAndre Swift to the Bears. Every move that you have there, I really, <laughs> really like. I wasn't a big fan of Swift either. That's what uh, I say, it was the worst was, contract here. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Austin Eckler to the Commanders was a head scratcher because you let Gibson walk. I'm like, okay, now we're, we're leaving the door open for Brian Robinson full time. He showed you some things these first two years. I'm excited for, for what's next for in his career. And then they go and they bring in Austin Eckler. That was surprising to me. Uh, because, But but kind of makes sense. You let go of, of Antonio Gibson. You get someone of a similar skill set in Austin Eckler, who obviously is more talented than Gibson. But at what point are we going to unleash Brian Robinson? I understand that he did get injured last season, but he is a pretty solid running back in this league, especially to you to have this salary cap and to put to make one of your first deals to be a running back. That was shocking to me. Uh, but the rest of these deals, all of them make sense. Uh, maybe you look at Saquon and think, hey, that's a lot of money being given to a running back, but he's not the highest paid running back. Shout out to say, uh, CMC. He set the market. That's perfect. And you add him to to this offense where we've seen Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift have pretty high levels of success, and he's by far and away better than them. Derrick Henry going to to the Ravens. We understand. We don't even have to talk about that. That's a home run. Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry will get scary. Gus Edwards as a sleeper to the Chargers makes sense because of Greg Roman. I mean, every move here outside of that that. Eckler and Swift move made sense. Last one I, I, I'll talk about. Um, oh, I, I just drew a blank. Uh, give me the... Pollard, Swift. Yes, Singletary. Pollard. Okay. That's what one. Pollard going to the Titans. People were a little iffy on that move. Understandably so because you let Derrick Henry walk, but you give more money to Tony Pollard. Why I'm okay with that move after sitting and thinking about it is... There's versatility now on this offense. I know Tajay Spears, you were looking forward to that. I don't blame you. Tajay Spears has some talent. But now when it's Tajay or Pollard on the field, you don't know what's happening. Because when Derek was there, it was guaranteed they're running the ball. They're not giving him, they're not going to give him much pass looks. But when Tajay's on the field, all right, they're probably going to run a screen. They're probably going to have some design play for Tajay. But now with Tony... You can do both at the same time. I get the money may not be the most ideal where it's going to be around $8 million a season, but it's not like Tony's a bad player by any means. It's unfortunate you move on from a Hall of Fame player, but now there's versatility with this offense. I really like what Tennessee did this offseason. How so much far. did CMC get? Guaranteed. I think it's four, oh guaranteed. I don't know, but I know it's fourteen mil or fourteen point five annually. He definitely got more than twenty six guaranteed for sure. three years. Is that fourteen? I, I will sure. say this. The two best moves were easily Saquon to the Eagles. I'll let you talk about that, Riv. And then Derrick Henry to the Ravens. I'll let you talk about that, mm-hmm. Dells. I want to talk about the worst guaranteed. move. See, 26, Saquon got 26 guaranteed. The worst move was the Bears signing DeAndre Swift. Right. I think it was 60 It, it didn't season make season. sense because last year, Bears running backs on non-quarterback runs ranked top 12 in EPA per rush, rushing success rate, yards per carry, and rushing elusiveness. And they faced the number two highest percentage of loaded boxes. So this was an efficient running attack, even without adding somebody like DeAndre Swift. And last season, Swift was 37th out of 49 running backs in yards over expectation, worse than Alexander Madison and Josh Kelly, and 46 amongst 59 qualified running backs and PFF grades. So the Bears signed DeAndre Swift three years, 24 million for what? When 
I think Roshan has a shot to be better than him. And quite frankly, you didn't need to invest this much money on a running back who I don't even think is that good of a running back. So I thought that was the worst move of all the moves that happened. But Riv, you can talk about say quantity. Can I just really add on to that point? If you were going to give a running back money, why didn't you sign back Monty last season? Monty's a better running back than DeAndre Swift. At this point in time, at least he's shown that in Detroit. Why didn't you go and give him your money? And the Bears haven't. They were number one in cap room, right? Entering yeah. the free number, agency. Them in Washington. I thought or, Washington was just one flat out by themselves. Whatever. They were amongst yeah, the, the top leaders three. in mm-hmm. terms I of I think cap Washington money. had like 96 million. I mean, they could have signed Pollard for the same amount of money. Facts. And you could have spent a little bit more to get Saquon. I mean, there were options and for And they the didn't Bears. do this. The Swift deal came out like 1230. It was like one of the first deals of the day. <laughs> yes. And they really didn't do much. They signed. Was Kevin Byer? I don't know if that was today yep, or yesterday. That was, they, that was they, before they, Kevin Byer got signed before Swift. Oh, was it? Okay. But they made those moves. I'm like, you got all this money. You got some holes and it's really just been these two signs <laughs> talk about say quantity eagles i will life. no, no, no. <laughs> i definitely will i, I try wanna, to keep it sweet uh short and sweet nah, i just want to like i just want to give a shout out to howie roseman man he's truly one of the greatest minds i've ever seen in my life <laughs> but i just don't understand how he does the shit he does saquon barkley was a giants legend you know he's a guy that was very known in the city you know he was very you know liked by the fan base and then he heads over to the Crazy. biggest rival of the Giants, the Smack Philadelphia the Eagles, for twenty six million guaranteed, thirty seven. He'll, he'll probably get that on bonuses and stuff, but three years, twenty six mil guaranteed. That's not even ten mil a year. So, like, I think that's good money. Essentially, that's not, is it? Three years, thirty six is twelve a year. No, I'm saying twenty six oh. guaranteed. Oh. I was talking about the guaranteed. I was talking about the guaranteed. Yeah, I Respect me, um, <laughs> for sure. But Cook. I did it. Thank. He's, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're I wasn't really paying attention. That, that's, your prob- that's your problem. It, I was just trying to. Because I was you were paying sure attention you were to the other guys, but not. The, the me guy. Let me sit back. Yeah. Okay. Um, Don't sick. forget about me, though. My 8% brother. Thanks, brother. Saquon Barkley just brings a different dynamic to this offense. Um, you mentioned it. DeAndre Swift was not good. Out of a couple breakout games, like if I remember off the time I had the Vikings game, game, he was good. The Tampa game. games, he was mm-hmm. like, uh, out of a couple games where he had his moments for sure when the, the, the passing game wasn't working, you know, Swift was doing his thing. But on a game by game basis, on a run by run basis, he just was not good in the past game. He had dropped some easy looks, you know, in the run game. He just didn't see the field well. Now you're bringing in a guy that's probably 30 times his level, a guy who can literally, in the pass game, in the run game, completely just change your game, not to mention you still have A.J. Brown, you still have Smitty, you still have Dallas, you still have Hurts. Like, this is an offense that was broken after about week 11, week 12-ish. I want to say they couldn't do anything in the run game, couldn't do anything in the pass game. Now you have somebody that can, you can rely on in the run game that we've never really had in a long... Like, we've never really had that since LaShawn McCoy, Brian Westbrook. We've never had that elite top running back guy. And when we did have it, you know, that, it was great to see. Now we've been just putting, you know, small running backs here and there that have kind of kept it afloat. Now you get a guy like Saquon Barkley. Now I know people, you know, we're talking about how we didn't necessarily fill the holes you know the holes are mainly the secondary and the linebackers you know, I do still think Slay is good I do still think he's a good cornerback yeah, for CJ sure. Johnson. We, we, that just happened about five ten minutes yes. ago which I told you let him cook let him and cook he freaking cook for sure <laughs> uh, so we brought him back which I thought he played really well for us you know and unfortunately he was hurt for the Lions but I do think Saquon you know he just brings us a, a scary dimension to this offense that I think we had two years ago, and I think last year we kind of lost that scare. You know, of course the schedule got a little harder, but I think two years ago we like we had it last year. We kind of lost it. Now you're coming in. How are you going to game plan against the team? We don't have our OC no more. Who would damn near Monty Williams like? He was really just fucking bad. So we don't have our OC now. We have a new guy, and I think this offense is definitely going to take. Yeah, Kellen Moore. Yeah, um, I heard good things and bad things. So. I'm 50, he's solid. Yeah, he's better I'm, than Brian Johnson. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not hard to be better than him. But I'm 50-50 on the moves. But I do think Saquon Come brings on. a different dynamic. He brings a extra energy to this offense. And with the guys we already had, with this offensive line losing Kelsey, too, I still think we have guys to, you know, not replace Kelsey, but, you know, manage. You bring in someone like Saquon who doesn't need a perfect offensive line. As long as he's healthy, this move is beautiful. I love this move. I think this move puts us back at one of the top teams in the NFC for sure. And, of course, the other moves we made. I'm just excited. To see what we're gonna do in the draft, man. Big move, you know. It's he's you not. Hated. I he, saw your tweet. What? Nothing. Good. I hated. No, no, I was playing. Oh, no, well, he was hating. He was on the Eagles. No, not really, bro. I'm just. Oh, I was just being trolling. honest. Um, you didn't like how we cook. Shame. How he's been cooking, but like I said, he hasn't addressed all of the holes on the team. We're gonna talk you about. Know, he, the Eagles you know, he's Mister Anti Running Back. He saw a running back contract and he gave him a stomach ache. <laughs> I just watched <laughs> the Eagles last year and. While the undershift wasn't great, that's not the reason why no, they no, were no. bad far last from, year, far or from. the reason they disappoint. I should say definitely um, helped. 
Derrick Henry going to the Ravens. About time. Uh, I feel like they've been flirting with Derrick Henry for a minute now. He's going to glaze this one, uh, though, right? Oh, glaze a big time. Big glaze. We've, uh, Let's go. We've been talking about getting the Ravens run game a serious running back for years now. They've been trotting out J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and uh, Keaton Mitchell, who burst onto the scene, unfortunately, tore his ACL. But Respect all of these guys Gus. that... huh? Respect Gus. Gus is He was is the fine. second best short yardage back. Oh, short yardage is NFL. solid. Yeah, yeah. yeah it It's just long. a shame it's not, it's not 31 wow, every, every, yeah. every snap. They upgraded. No, I knew. I knew. Uh, but Derrick Henry, shout out to Ian Hartitz, who works for PFF. Um, last two seasons, the Titans' yards before contact per carry ranked 30th in 2023. It was 0. .9. 2022, it was one flat. Um, the Ravens, the last four seasons, have been first or, or best in terms of yards uh, before contact per carry at 1.8. Um, and then Derrick Henry, <laughs> after contact, these last two years, have ranked top 10 at 3.6 and 3.3. Derrick Henry, I, I think, still has the juice. Right, I, I oh, don't yeah. think he, he's far from washed. She's just been on a Tennessee Titans team that has had one of the worst offensive lines in football, Horrible. has had some really troubling passing games over the last couple of seasons, specifically really since A.J. Brown has moved on to Philadelphia. But now you get Derrick Henry in a team that wants to run the ball. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested to see how much, because Derrick Henry has primarily been used uh, you know, under center, right? I, the Ravens do a lot of stuff in shotgun too, so I am interested to see how much that changes because I still think Derrick Henry, at his best, is going to work under shotgun where he could get you know kind of a running start into um, into the offensive line where he could find those holes and really burst onto the scene. But you have to love this if you're a Ravens fan and if you're in the AFC North, you have to be terrified because Lamar Jackson and this Ravens offense have been consistently one of the best rushing attacks in the NFL. Greg Roman, of course, for years is known for that. Even last season, though, when Greg Roman moved on, they were still a really strong rushing team. And now they just added one of the better running backs, probably the best running back of our generation, oh, at yeah. least. You know, him, Adrian Peterson, that type of realm that Derrick Henry has been in. We'll throw CMC in there, too. Uh, CMC, respect. of course, yeah. But in that top three to five guys, For that sure. is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, has, you know, so many records and numbers, and just he's a fantastic running back. So I'm really excited to see Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry in the oh. same backfield. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be scary. Your Browns better be scared. Them. Oh, shit. Those Bengals better be scared. The Steelers don't got one, a one. chance in hell. You know, since huh? 2018, one, one, no quarterback. Yeah, that's I'll never forget that. Since 2018, Derrick Henry has been number one mm -hmm. in rushing rushing yards by running back. Lamar Jackson number one in rushing yards by quarterback. So now you got that tandem going on. Over 8,000 yards in that time. Yeah. That's nuts. It's going to be scary on how to stop this team in, in the run game, and I think it's going to give them an identity there where uh, it's already reliant on the run, but that's because of Lamar Jackson. But now you have somebody like Derrick Henry who holds his own weight. And I think this is it's going to be scary. And once Keaton Mitchell, mm -hmm. he tore his ACL late in the season, so yes. who knows when he comes back. But if he's able to be 100% healthy, that kind of thunder and lightning they have, Keaton yeah. Mitchell looked phenomenal last year. And I agree with you. I think Derrick Henry still got a lot left in the tank. I think the Titans' offensive line is putrid, and it's a big reason why he wasn't <laughs> efficient last season. But with the Ravens, I think he'll be just fine. Other moves that I liked, Zach Moss to the Bengals. Yep. They traded Joe Mixon. I, I like that backfield of Chase Brown and Zach Moss. Zach Moss more so will work the short yardage area of the field where Chase Brown is that home run hitter, <coughs> explosive running back. I like that tandem they got going on. I actually like Eckler to the commanders because uh, Eckler to me is a receiving back. And I think Brian Robinson being your normal first and back for, back. you know, between the tackles, yeah, first and second down. I think it's a perfect balance, and I he is an upgrade over Antonio Gibson For in that sure. regard. So I actually like the Eckler uh, going to the Commanders, and the connection there is that Anthony Lynn is on a coaching staff, and he's the one with the Chargers who found Eckler originally. And Josh Jacobs to the Green Bay Packers. Of course. They wanted Aaron Jones to take a pay cut. Crazy. How do we feel about that? Was that an upgrade in the grand scheme of things? It wasn't an upgrade over Aaron Jones. That's number one. And mm. At first, I was very excited about the move because I thought, oh, my goodness, Josh, they're pairing and Josh yeah, and yeah. Aaron. But now that I know it's not, I think it got a little bit worse. But here's where it can be better in a way where durability is a concern with Aaron Jones. And last year, he was injured the entire year. Where Josh Jacobs, you can rely on him to, to be healthier. He's been that for most of his career. And uh, I, I do want them to address that second running back position because I think A.J. Dillon just didn't have enough juice for me, and I feel like he was terrible in short yardage situations. So I think they got to address that. But getting Josh Jacobs to at least fill the role that Aaron Jones is going to leave and 
most likely be healthier throughout the season so you get a more consistent rushing attack. I think in in that way it could be better, but the ceiling with Aaron Jones is better and you know he's hitting 30 and usually at that age yeah. running backs tend to regress. I thought it was smooth that they kind of just like realized they wasn't going to be able to keep Aaron and just swooped in and be like mm-hmm. let's go get Josh. That, Jacobs. that Jacobs deal is really a one year deal too. I think it's 12 million guaranteed. They signed him 4 for 48, but those last 3 years are kind of fake and um Josh Jacobs also is a workhorse back. You know, Aaron Jones, we've been saying it for years that we want to see him more involved in the offense, see him get more touches. But we've also seen him be banged up more often than not, unfortunately. So Josh Jacobs is someone who... I mean, Minnesota could be scary, though. Yeah, I love that pickup for Minnesota. I mean, a one-year, six, seven million dollar deal, whatever it was. That's a huge upgrade. I mean, last year they were running out Alexander Madison damn near the entire season until the last couple weeks. No, I agree. I think it's going to be... A good addition for the Vikings because they need a running back. I mean, oh they just gosh, they just didn't have sure, a running back at sure. all. They haven't had the, one since AP. Dalvin, Dalvin. Oh Cole. shit, Dalvin! Mm-hmm. I missed the whole Dalvin arc. I'm just crazy. For real, that, that was a huge. Yeah, that was a huge. Yeah, <laughs> woo. Huge. You was, you, was you was thinking. No. Yeah, you were thinking. Not really. You were. I mean, Dalvin's one of my guys. I saw. I know we take that jersey down. I have his jersey. That shit sucks. Huh? The Luca one? What yeah. the Dalvin? No, 33? that one too. But that we were mainly talking oh. about that. Oh, whoa, the Aaron Rodgers one. Yeah. Why the Aaron Ro- Rodgers one? We're, t- we're done with the nineties too, bro. You gotta take that down. We are done. With we the are 90s. done with the nineties. We, we gotta talk about that on the, on the next basketball we're, pod. We are. We haven't even given our opinion on it. Really, we're we're you know 2000, 2010 babies. We're done with the nineties. But Michael Jordan with is the, your goat. So you're saying LeBron? I actually, I actually, when we talked about, I never answered who I thought was the goat. Who's your goat then? Is that Kurt? Yes. I mean, you argued Michael Jordan as your goat for years. Now you're just done with that. That was like. Four or five years ago. It's all right. He saw the, the tape, and uh, brother can't go left, so we're here. <laughs> so LeBron's your goat. I don't have a goat. Oh, what okay. the fuck? Yeah, I don't have a goat. Okay, that makes some sense. Like a I would rather you say, like, fucking Wilt and not have a goat. I will actually your goat? never say Wilt. <laughs> Jason Tatum. Respect. I mean, if I could say that, Steph Curry. No, but it would be LeBron. At LeBron Jordan, it would be LeBron. I, I could say LeBron. It's at least respectable. You know, Steph Curry being your goat. Steph Curry. Not, not Jason Tatum being your goat. It's Who's yours? Fucking Anthony Edwards? Luka Doncic already? Ju- <laughs> if you would have said Julius Randle, I might have peed myself. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Can't say nothing. Got you. Unfortunately, you he's did. a cloud chaser. That's How can great. I say that? Am I allowed to say that? You, know, you guys saw Puka starting five. What I'm cool with that. Five? Although Luca being at the two was crazy. He I had, respected we had it. Steph, Luca, Steph, Luca, LeBron, LeBron KD. KD. I forgot who was at the, Oh, Joker at the five. I think I'm blanking too. I don't remember this. It was center. a very, very not '90s '80s five. It was very new. He passed the vibe. Yeah. Very He's done with though. the 90s too. Yeah. Jamal Murray gave his input on the we're done with the 90s. And I he guess. said that it was stupid and it was an eye roll. And I don't disagree overly. It, it is stupid. It's OG's Zelda. fine for his life on TikTok. Yeah, right shout now. out to OG. Trying to defend Doing 90s. God's work. Grading the Giants and Panthers Brian Burns trade on both sides. The Giants traded a second round pick and a pair of fifth round picks. Really, you just fifth round pick swaps and then a fifth round pick on top of it. Um, to the Panthers to land Brian Burns and they signed him to a five-year, $150 million deal. I know the Panthers had made a move after this to go get a receiver. We'll talk about it after and grade that trade. Mm -hmm. But for this trade, what do you give the Brian's bird trade a grade? Mm -hmm. So Jalen Johnson opens up about sex addiction at $76 million. (laughs) 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 What? (laughs) That's a real issue. Yeah, that's crazy. I get it though, but damn. Um, I'll say okay. this. When it comes to the trade you for the try. Giants, I'm going to give them a B. I give them a B because making Brian Burns the second highest paid edge rusher in the game, I think that's a little bit much. I think Brian Burns is a great talent for sure. Why I give them a B, though, is because they're solidifying their strengths. Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence, and Brian Burns is a scary trio. That's going to make it uh, make it living hell for the opposing quarterbacks, for sure. I know your feelings on Kayvon. You were wrong, baby. Sorry. Kayvon, Kayvon sacks or cleanup sacks. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it does not matter. Well, going to help. It doesn't matter. Because Brian Dexter Burns Lawrence, Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, that trio is dirty. Are you back? The re- oh, we're here, baby. <laughs> we're here. Uh, but the one thing I will say why I, I feel a little bit more confident is because at least the Giants have tried to do something in regards to fixing up this O-line. They bring in the offensive lineman uh, from the Giants, John, uh, John Runyon. Uh, they bring him in for three years, $21 million deal. You, you needed to add a guard. You get get Glowinski out of the building. Don't even think twice about that. And and Runyon was solid for them, uh, solid for Green Bay last season. You get a, a slightly above average guard at, at in the NFL. You'll take that, especially for that contract. Uh, but the whole point for the New York Giants was trying to improve this offense. And so far, 
They, they've, they've tried to do that by bringing in offensive linemen, but not much else at the wide receiver position. I, I think they signed Isaiah McKenzie uh, about an they hour did, ago. Yeah. So I'm anticipating a pick six. They're going to either take an offensive lineman or, like I, I'm hoping they do, take a wide receiver because there's a chance that Neighbors is there. There's a chance that Roma Dunes is there. And, hell, if it really gets to that point, Brock Bowers will most definitely be there at six but hopefully they get one of the one of the top two that I mentioned beforehand. But for the Panthers, at first I was confused because if you're the Panthers, you should be in the business of keeping talent. And two years ago, you were offered a, a deal that if if now it was reported, it was a second in 23, a first in 24, a first in 25. It was a lot. And they said no. In hindsight, now you get a second and a fifth round pick, you said, or second and a fourth round pick? It was a fourth second and a fifth, fifth round pick. Yeah. Fifth yeah. round pick, I, be, I thought so too. But for, for that to be the compensation out of just trying to get out of paying him that egregious amount of money, I was confused a little bit. But like you said, they, they've made moves. They, they've put in a lot of money into their offensive line, bringing in Robert Hunt. They just traded for Deontay Johnson, trying to get uh, uh, Bryce Young a little bit of help. Who knows if they're, they're done and making moves. Uh, they don't have a first round pick this year, obviously that belongs to Chicago, but they do have the first pick in the second round. They have so, two second round picks too. So I would give the Panthers in this regard. I'm going to give them a C plus just because I'm I'm staying optimistic. But I'm it's giving them, I give yeah. them yeah. It's no, you're, you're I, I'm only giving them a C plus because paying Brian Burns that amount of money with their timeline right now. Makes no sense. It's almost like they don't think Kayvon Thibodeau is a superstar if they're paying another edge rusher that amount of money. Isn't he like year two? Going into year three. Year three. Year is three. that what you? Is that what your takeaway? I you don't. You don't make a trade like that if if you believe in Kayvon Thibodeau. That's what I'm saying. But, I, I don't think you make a trade like but that. But if you're trying to make your defensive line OP, you make a move like this. Well, Kayvon Thibodeau is not part of the OP because <laughs> he, he was he he was 46th in total pressures last year. Would you say year. Chase Young wasn't a part of the OP for the Niners? No, he no. wasn't. Oh, but no, I feel like they still made the move just cause. They Chase Young had a good game talent. in the Super Bowl though. Yeah, but, you know, I don't even think Kayvon's as good as Chase Young. I think Chase Young's a little bit better than him or probably, you know, significantly better than him. The, it's a motor issue with him. Kayvon last year was like 46 in pressures. He had 44 total pressures. And amongst all edge rushers that had a um, that had 500 pass rushing snaps or more, he ranked in the 60s, I think. No, out of 68 edge rushers, he ranked 59th. So he's 59 out of 68. Last year, he just wasn't that good. So I think I will give the Giants an A for this because <clears throat> Dexter Lawrence, the only interior defensive lineman you could put better than him, are Aaron Donald and Chris Jones. Mm -hmm. And at this point, he's like star. he's on that tier. Yeah. So if you pair him up with an edge rusher of Brian Burns caliber, I agree with you. I don't think Brian Burns is elite, but I think he's great. Oh, yeah. And He's not Miles Garrett. He's not Micah. He's not on that. So he's not TJ. He's not Crosby. But he's just a tick below. No wrong and guy. if you add to that defensive line with Dexter Lawrence, I think now you have a unit on your team that every week, if I'm an opponent facing the Giants, I got to worry about these two guys. Like, we have to worry about how we're going to protect our quarterback because they got those guys that are elite at getting to the passer and they're very good at stopping the run. For the Panthers, this is a D because. The Panthers, when they traded for Sam Darnold, they gave up a second-round pick, a fourth-round pick, and a sixth-round pick. What they got back for Brian Burns was a second-round pick and two fifth-round picks. And, you know, when you're getting arguably – no, it's not arguably. It's a fact. When you're getting less compensation for Sam Darnold or, or for Brian Burns you than you correct. gave up for Sam Darnold, I think that's an issue. Their time to trade Brian Burns was – to the Rams when they could have got him for two first round picks. Crazy. That would have been a that, that would have so been a crazy. complete steal. So I'm giving the Panthers a D. I think the other moves that they've made this offseason kind of offset this move, but nonetheless, this move standalone only, it's a D. And I wouldn't even be opposed if somebody gave it an F. If if we didn't know about the two first, yeah, if we didn't know, enough. I feel like I could be like, all right, you know, the Panthers, they're trying to build up the offense, get some draft picks. But the fact that we knew two first round picks was on the table and that could have set yourself up nicely. Even if you make that Bryce Young trade, at least you still have picks to fall back on. Yeah. That Bryce um, Young trade was still crazy. It was too. still was pretty bad. It's if you look Bryce. at everything, nice. they've, that's a lot. If you, yeah. if you combine like that's what they, uh, what they gave up for Bryce 
with what they could have got for Brian They've Burns. They've gotten robbed oh multiple God, times. Bro. I feel like we use that in hindsight. Did we anticipate that the Panthers would be the worst team in the league? No, well, coming what, in. What are no. the worst? Coming in. No. Number one overall pick. I don't think you we, have I don't the think we were expecting. You went into the fishing. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 I don't want to fucking hear that. You uh, told people. Yeah. Shit, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. You're right. Yeah, you know yeah, what? But you're right. I, I probably should have taken the previous I felt like deal I said into account before more I said so that, with the grade. I will say this about the Giants. I, I think it puts them in a good position now, though, because now they don't have to worry about drafting defense, really. You know, like you mentioned, yeah. with their pick, we know 100% is going to be offense. I think them getting Drew Locke signals they're not going to go quarterback at that pick. I think it's 100% going to be a receiver. Needs to be. They lost Saquon Barkley. Devin Singletary, nowhere near Saquon, but he's good. Okay. Very so, good signing. He's good. Very good signing. He's a, he will be a stopgap player. He will give you solid production. You can trust him with snaps. And with Wandell's continued improvement, if you draft a receiver, Game I think... Height. The this moves they made on the yeah. offensive line were good. Getting Jermaine Olimnor from the Raiders, you now either have Evan, Evan Neal at right tackle guard. Yeah, or guard. You now have players on the offensive line that you can trust and that can play. So I think they've made minor improvements outside of the Brian Burns deal, and it puts them in a good position to now draft the best available receiver at that spot. The only move I would have liked or to see end. the Giants make this offseason that was different was tagging Xavier McKinney. Just letting him walk... I feel like that's going to be a, a mistake in the future. Yeah, Jason Pinnock. Jet legend. Fact. Uh, but at the same time, letting McKinney walk, him go to the Packers. We're probably going to talk about one of those signings, of course, McKinney being one of those that I might talk about a little bit later. That's the one move that I look at and think, hey, if I'm the Giants, I'd like that one back. But making this type of deal now in hindsight makes makes a lot of sense. You don't pay Saquon. You, you don't pay McKinney because you tried to make this power move and trading and signing long-term Brian Burns, for sure. Yeah, Brian Burns comes to the Giants. He's automatically one of their three best players. Dexter, Andrew Thomas, Brian Burns. I think I think yeah. that, that's pretty safe, especially after losing Saquon um, and Xavier McKinney. So on one end, you got a super talented player. You know, Brian Burns, is he up there with the Miles Garretts and, and both of the world? No, probably not. But you're going to bring in someone that is number one going to alleviate pressure off Kayvon and Dexter. So mm -hmm. even though I'm, I'm more on your side with Kayvon than Drew's side mm -hmm. where being top I, 12 and I think he's I guess fine. Some of them just come in <laughs> being cleanups. I mean, it yeah. was, top 12 it was a lot if of, you, a lot of yeah, cleanups. Yeah. I guess you watch all of those sacks. You'll see some um, of them. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a terrible player. He's not, he's not, I'm, but I'm he, just he's saying not. like if, if you have a great edge rusher, you don't go out and trade for Brian Burns. That's what I'm saying. If you got your guy, I mean, the Chargers had Joey Bosa, right? That was their guy. Why'd they trade for Khalil Mack? He's injury to prone. To make him OP. Yeah, but he's also injury prone. That didn't work out. It didn't. Because, <laughs> but neither of them really worked out. But usually, if you got two guys on your defense, you had Max Ryan Crosby. You why'd you trade for Chandler Jones? We signed him, right? We trade for him? Why'd you that, all, that also didn't work out. That was, that was to make their defensive line have a second good player. You had, had Aaron nobody. Donald. Why, why, and Leonard Floyd. Why, cook, why did you trade him, for Von Miller? Cook him. Those are teams <laughs> that... We're in super, the Rams specifically, Super Bowl contention. How do we get even better? The Giants are damn near in a rebuild. They're in an rebuild. edge rusher, a five year, $180 million contract. But Burns. what's You're their strength prior to this deal? Dexter Lawrence. <laughs> and Literally, the Dexter line. Lawrence. No, no, I really just think it's Dexter Lawrence. You're like, really disrespect. Strength. Like, bro, you don't just run into 12 sacks. <laughs> he, he actually did. Like, <laughs> he, 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 he was 12. the luckiest edge rusher of God. all time. No, I swear no, to God, you, God, we can go through all the sacks and you tell me did he run into them or not. Okay. Definitely over half. 100%. Okay. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. That's so funny. I swear to God, he did He did not get those sacks. I'm going to look it up right now. I'm going to look it up. All 12. Right now. You know, no, I'll, I'll sit down too. I'll all sit down and do it too. Okay. I'll, I'll, let me continue with yeah, Brian. Please, Brian. please. Um, because I think for the Giants, the main issue I have with this move is that it feels like, and it's not done yet, free agency is still open, the draft hasn't happened the Giants are kind of punting on offense in a sense where the wide receiver room is super weak. Devin Singletary, he's fine. At best, he's like a middle of the pack running yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. You know, losing Saquon Barkley, going to Devin Singletary. Offensively, there, there's really no weapons there. there there's no. nothing that you're going to look at offensively as a defensive coordinator and say, we have to stop this. Going into this, going into this game, the first play, ah. first one I'm watching, he goes to Zach Wilson, yeah, he, forces a fumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach one, didn't ah. run into that one. You might have capped. Yeah, I know shit. He I capped. didn't cap. Ran into all twelve is a fucking blatant lie. This is running into all twelve, or Zach Wilson just fucking done. I told you half of them. 
That's what I told okay, you. Okay, well, I watched one. Here we go. First one I watched in a three sack game versus your New York Jets. <laughs> I mean, New York one, Jets. one, a, a fourth of his sacks came against the Jets, bro. <laughs> I think that's right. more telling on you guys. Yeah, you guys. Um, Brian Burns, probably. though. Uh, I worry about how the Giants are just allocating their resources. You're trading a second and fifth round pick and giving a huge contract to a defensive lineman. I'm someone who, the one thing the Jets have had my whole life has been a very good defensive oh, yeah, line. We've, sure. we've had guys that have been able to um, maybe not get after the quarterback. We've had solid defensive linemen, whether it's Mama Wilkerson for a year or Sheldon Richardson, all of these dudes. You need offense at the end of the day. Brian Dable knows that. Joe Shane knows that. So on one hand, getting... Brian Burns for a second round pick is great value. You know, I think in a vacuum, that is phenomenal. On the other hand, giving him the second largest contract for an edge and still having all of these holes on offense. They've made some moves on the offensive line, but I'm not really looking at any of them as like this solidified, like this is going to be the dude for the next three, four seasons. A lot of them are shorter, shorter term contracts. You're not a so, running dude. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all TBD. And that mm-hmm. offensive line outside of Andrew Thomas, there's still some questions outside of uh, John Michael Schmitz, your favorite player. You know what? Um, Somebody said this. I think I was listening to the athletic football show and they said this, but you know, they're getting Brian Burns now because they are preparing for the eventual incoming of a quarterback on a rookie contract. So they're essentially like, instead of making all the moves after you get that rookie quarterback, they are preparing their team for when they have rookie quarterback and they're spending. I'm not saying that they're going to draft one this year, but it definitely in the next year or two, that has to be at the top of their list in, in drafting one. Um, Maybe or that makes sense though. They write it out with Daniel, baby, and they just Enough. keep doing themselves. I'll tell you what they're not here's here's what's gonna happen. That roller coaster is broken down already. No, they want to play with destroyed. that roller coaster. Uh, it's like El Toro. Like you know when El Toro first came out, it was like the big hit. It's viral, but now as time's gone on, El Toro like it breaks backs. Um, but wait, what? Yeah, bro, El Toro, they had to shut it down. For real? And like fucked up way too many people's <laughs> bodies. So uh, but here we are. Wandell Robinson had himself a solid <laughs> year last year. Here we go. at pick six. God willing, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze to the New York Giants. Now we're optimistic. Draft offensive lineman. Now we're optimistic. I mean, your quarterback still sucks. I mean, he won a playoff game. <sighs> you know what? I can't say anything. You can't. <laughs> Has more playoff wins than the Jets do in the last 10 years. <laughs> I'm just speaking facts and the Broncos. <laughs> Shit, well, not ten, not ten. You think the Giants would give Daniel Jones that contract again today? Probably not. Hell no. Not a chance. They got lucky. Here, and, and, <laughs> and, I, and I wish I, I got lucky. Yeah, I mean, he bet on no, himself. No, it worked no, out. I will also say this: it's well, really it's a not a bad deal. Actually. It was a two year deal. It's a two year deal. It's not a bad deal, but now they're looking back and wishing they didn't give like, it. Fuck, wishing to give him eighty million guaranteed. Um, I'm giving the Giants a fat D, man. I'm just like, come on, what fat D. You're Sorry. giving him a fat D. That's yeah. crazy. The D. fuck? <laughs> Hat shame. <laughs> My bad. But um, I'm giving him a D. I just thinking about all the other trades they had that they fumbled. Thinking about what the Rams have done and then going in with Brian Burns. Giving him no no, no ch- ch- Ray, Bro, Ray, I'm Ray. sorry. Let's a D? Yeah, I'm giving I'm giving Oh, not the Giants. I'm sorry. I'm giving the Panthers I've a got D. It, Pardon got me. It. The Panthers a D. Because I just think they could have got more. Oh, this is oh sack that Kayvon ran into. You see Dexter Lawrence creates his pressure, and then Brock Purdy runs up and Kayvon comes and sacks him. That's one sack he just ran into. Okay. Well, Bro, are you calling that a run into sack? It really I is. Mean, he didn't Dexter Lawrence created the pressure. Yeah, but I don't I wouldn't call that you still got it. Ta- yeah, yeah, but yeah, he he Dexter created the pressure. The reason Brock Purdy stepped up in a pocket is of course, because yeah. of Dexter. Yeah, Dexter's one of the more He's Dexter this Lawrence. Isn't, this isn't something that Kayvon's creating. That's my point. Like He's not creating any pressure here. Did you get to the sack on Tua yet? Kayvon right. got he's chipped. You, you see, Kayvon got taken out the play, and then it's just did you get, roaming. Did you get to the sack on Tua? Tua, who was one no, of the... No, I'm, I'm, just watch, I'm just watching these right now. Oh, okay, yeah. just making sure. Yeah. Get, wait till you get to that one. Okay. Uh, Tua, who was almost sacked zero times. Obviously, I'm exaggerating. Uh, Shout out to Mike McDaniel for that. All right, we have one sack already that I do. Would you count this as the run into? I would. Okay. Rev, you can keep going. I'm just going to try to. See I didn't even I give my six. grace, but go ahead, Rev. I would say I'll give the Panthers a D um, just because of the way they've just, honestly, they failed every trade they've done in the last two or three years. And Did I they fail like, the CMC trade? Deontay's a W. Yeah, that's honestly weighed too heavily on my grade. Deontay was cool. Well, we're not talking about that honestly, right Steelers now. Steelers got fleeced. Uh, sure. However, you want to, you know, slice it. Dante Jackson's not a bad pickup, though. He was going to get cut. He was. He's, oh, he's cool. Enough. I don't like the Giants don't have an offense, oh God. so it's like I don't I don't know like, uh, uh, like their strength is defense, but offensive they don't have a quarterback in the they court. They, like they don't have a quarterback. They have young receivers, young promising receivers, but they don't have a receiver that's still 
like sticks out yet. And I know you want them to get Rome or you want them to get Malik neighbors, but they still don't have a quarterback. But defensively, they're going to be great. I think defensively, their front seven is going to be pretty dope. Who had more playoff wins this year? Uh, <laughs> let me just shut up. Let me just not be stupid. I won't say anything. Who are you going to say, Daniel Jones or? <laughs> no, no, no one. Who are you going to say? Uh, I'm here for all vibes. No, no, no. I don't want to do that to myself. So people, why did you people already people already slated me enough for Daniel Jones. Let me not add fuel to the fire. Um, Giants B. I would give. I, you said D and B. That D for the Panthers. I think that's fair. <laughs> I think that's Giants fair. B. That's fair. Dallas, you mentioned the Panthers, and let's talk about them and the trade they just made that I think matters the most. And they got Bryce Young help. Bryce Young is finally going to have a receiver to throw to outside of Adam Thielen. Deontay Johnson going to Carolina. The Panthers <clears throat> traded Dante Jackson, and was it a sixth or seventh round pick? So, One of those. So yeah. they gave away, the Panthers gave away the seventh and Dante Jackson. The, the Steelers gave away Deontay and a sixth. Okay. Uh, or the other way around. Fuck. <laughs> no, they got, the Steelers got the sixth. Okay. Yeah. It's like we pay him to do a this job. This was it. an A-plus move for All Carolina. Right. I, I cooked. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> if you look at their offseason... They beefed up the offensive line with Damian Lewis and Robert Hunt. Yes. They're moving Austin Corbett Definitely to center. Him. If they can get a bounce back year from Ike Iquanu, I think the offensive line is cooking. They're going to be a really good unit. And now you have Adam Thielen and Deontay Johnson. You have two second-round picks to use on offense and maybe get another receiver in there to help Bryce out. What do you think about the Deontay trade for Carolina? Uh, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Bryce Young desperately needed a consistent wide receiver option. And listen, with all due respect to Adam Thielen, who I think was serviceable in Bryce's rookie campaign, when he's your wide receiver one, we got serious fucking problems. He was gross. Um, I, I thought that they'd be a little bit more aggressive in the trade market where they did get Deontay Johnson for a great price. I thought they'd be one of the suitors for T. Higgins, uh, given the fact that he did just request himself a trade out of Cincinnati. So I thought that that would be a destination. You mentioned Calvin Ridley would be a potential signing. I don't know if that's out of the realm of possibility, truthfully. Like, that still could be in the cards for them, given they do need wide receiver help. Uh, yeah, that was all Kayvon. That was all Kayvon. Um, Dexter but, Lawrence is in his face. Okay. But who's there? Uh, it's a half like both. It's both. Um, he didn't run into that though. He did. No, he did. I'm not yeah, saying he did. Say but at the same time, that's a gang. That's a gang. I still, I still want to see the Panthers be aggressive in this free agency period. I want to see them go and bring in another option for for Bryce Young because last year you put him through one of the worst situations we've seen a rookie rookie quarterback be in. It's him and Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence has the edge a little bit just for the fact of he had arguably the worst head coach in NFL history yeah. right next to Nathaniel Hackett. But Bryce Young had himself a terrible situation. You want to go into year two feeling as comfortable and confident as possible. This is a home run deal for them. Deontay Johnson's a great talent. We understand that maybe he... We, we, he kind of cleaned up the drop problem as his career has gone on. We kind of saw him pop back up last season. But he's going to be an option that he can go to on a consistent basis where Deontay can win on a route on a consistent basis. And that's going to be huge for just his confidence, seeing a ball received and then moving the ball down the field. So there's things to be optimistic with the Panthers. And I am keeping my, my eyes open. And I'm very interested to see what the future has for Carolina because I still believe in Bryce. How, how I think he's a great quarterback. Free and oh, not good, uh, but I, I, made I, some good moves. About the Bills, Jordan right. Brooks. Cool. Very, very solid pickup. They needed some linebacker help there. Lost bringing Wilkins. Jordan Brooks. That, and bad. Van Ginkle. And Van Ginkle. How how could they have matched that Wilkins One deal? They 10, couldn't have. 80 the biggest L. And this this could be... It's paying Tua. No. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Uh, um, <laughs> clears every quarterback you ever had. Yeah, Mark um, Sanchez, playoff wins. <laughs> okay, game manager. Keep up. What are doing? <laughs> now, those stats he said killed me. No, the 190. I'm supposed to be fucking, <laughs> fucking, fucking moving. That's how I know you didn't, me, that's how I know y'all didn't watch the game. Okay, we, I, I really don't remember the game, but fuck, I do yeah. vividly. Those stats, the um, 190. Bro, telling me I didn't me. watch the game back in the day against the Patriots. Is that who is that against? The Pats, the correct? Okay. So Mark Sanchez was not a game manager that game. Nah, he, he wasn't. He, was, he was doing his thing. It's just the stats gave off insane game yeah, management. Yeah, Tua had less than 200 yards He's in his first good. playoff game. Okay, Franca. again, it was the coldest. Did you see people had to get amputations? What happened in Germany? Oh, did, didn't he have like less that. than... How, how many yards did he have in Germany when he faced the Chiefs? <laughs> oh, I think him and Mahomes had the same. Yeah, Who won? Fuck out of here. <laughs> Who won? Those got the same wins, baby. Um, <laughs> let's get back to the conversation. Oh, you asked me, the biggest L? Yes. Robert Hunt. Mm. Ironically, back to this conversation. Because Robert Hunt, I've been preaching for a couple of years yeah, now. Yeah. Robert Hunt has been a great guard for them. And any offensive line help was obviously beneficial for the, for the Miami Dolphins. 
losing Hunt, whether you want to look at the, the Panthers overpaying or not, they had to do something like this to help out Bryce. But it, it's unfortunate for Tua where I feel like with the Dolphins, losing Wilkins, a leader hurts. But losing Robert Hunt might be the biggest L of them all. And when you get $100 million, it's going to be hard to match You got to say yes. You Deontay, have to say yes. uh, 2019, this is ESPN's open rating, which we used before. 2019, Deontay was number two. 2020, number three. 2021, number four. 2022, number one. This past year, 2023, number 11. If you look at his reception perception numbers by Matt Harmon. Him, bitch. Very solid as well. Oh, and bitch. man, and in zone. Stop. Fuck, I forgot. I'm under allegations there. Deontay Johnson <laughs> is a great route runner. And I love I love this fit for Bryce Young because I know the player we often <laughs> mocked to Carolina is T. Higgins. T. Higgins is not the same separator as Deontay. No. Nope. And I feel like for Bryce Young's play style, he needs a receiver that can separate it's at a Adam, high level. That's why him and Adam Thielen work so well early exactly. in the season. And that's why I think Deontay Johnson is going to work really well with Bryce Young. And that's the type of receiver that he needs. Yeah, no, I love this move. This is they needed a wide receiver desperately. They still need probably at least two more yeah. in the draft. I'm sure they're going to go after someone. Wouldn't be surprised that they, you know, get a tier two or tier three guy in free agency as well. Mr. Dells, I need your expertise on this play. Here we go. We, we already counted one, right? Here we so go. that was like there's clean, twelve. Right? You told me half. Yeah, yeah. I counted so one. Already. We're one and one. This right? is every. I'm watching a video that says every giant sack at the bye week. So this is at the bye week. So you know, it, it wasn't just cave on sacks. But you see here, Dexter yeah, Lawrence exactly. creates that interior pressure. He's not able to really get him down and cave on his right that's there. A that's a half sack, yeah. That's a cleanup sack of shit. But that's a cleanup, right? <laughs> I'll be honest. That's a, yeah. Dexter Lawrence creates that pressure, doesn't get him down, and then To be fair, though, he got, he, he got some pr- like he got around Leno at the end. Leno. Yeah. No, so, I'm, not, I'm not saying cave on doesn't have wins, but... um. I'm what just saying. Know, you, you tried to be very, very vocal about how a lot of his sacks are not... Real one, yeah, like over half of them. I I, I still stand over on half. Of I, them. I really still. I stand watched. On them. I watched at least six sacks in this time that we had this conversation. The the San Francisco one, you have it, but against the Seahawks, against the Commanders, not that one. There's another sack. All three against the Jets, they're all clean. Now, nah, but I do think Joel has a point. The Giants have a ton of holes. If you think Kayvon is a guaranteed superstar, I don't know if you trade a second round pick and give him that contract. But again, a second round pick. Fucking hogwash for a, a a great edge rusher. It's really not the pick that matters to me. It's the amount of money they dished out to him that no, matters. No, and I'm with me. you, and that's why I, I feel like I couldn't go A in that regard because it is a lot of money, but they added to their strength, and that is defensive line. And yes, their best defensive lineman is Dexter Lawrence. That's not a slight on Kayvon. No, no, Dexter no, no, Lawrence not. is an elite no, defensive no, no lineman. That. No. But you Just now have Kayvon now. and Brian on the edge, and now if you're going to double-team Dexter... You're fucked on both sides. I agree. I, I just really think that, like, it's just Brian Burns and Dexter Lawrence that scare me. You're t- uh, he was top 12 in sacks in the NFL. It doesn't really matter to me. Okay, I'll be honest. Whatever. Like, that Go doesn't ahead. really then, matter then to me. There's no conversation to be had. Because I don't, I, don't th- I don't think sacks are the end-all, be-all. Yeah, when, when I know. You're a big pressures guy. It's not only that, but it's not, when we talk about a player and an edge rusher, I don't think sacks is the stat that you use at the forefront to say this guy's better than this guy. Mm-hmm. Bryce well, Huff I'm doesn't not have he's better than anybody. I know, I'm saying he's a good player. I know, player. but I'm saying you're you're me, you're using stats as a measurement as to why he's well, really 12 good. Twelve sacks is no. I mean, there's nobody Bryce Huff that really has is, less sacks than Kayvon. He's way better than. Kayvon. I like Bryce Huff as a talent for sure. Bryce Huff not is way better than him. Bro. No, Bryce Huff got. is better than him. Yeah, not he, saying he's bad at all. It's not it's great it, actually. And Kayvon has more sacks. Yes, cocksucker. Both of you. I get it. I would love to see Bryce Huff too. Over the past two years, he's. He's not second in pass I know. There's a lot. Get, I got it. He's great. Yeah. He's amazing. I, I know. I know. He's going to go to the Eagles and it's going to be star. amazing. Can't wait. All I'm saying is that. I'm an Eagles fan, so I'm okay with it. What? I'm an Eagles fan. All, all I'm saying is that Sachs is not there, the end of the deal. I'm cool with that. Jalen Hurts. If Hurts he's is more there, of an Eagles fan than you. More of a Hurts fan for sure. Oh, that's not Eagles. Yeah, yeah, Eagles. yeah. That's not Eagles an lost me. Eagles is fine. Free agency is still going on, so we're going to save the topic of the winners and losers for when that finishes. But what we will talk about right now is. What teams have made the best and worst free agent signings? We're going to talk about this topic in the form of contractual value. Which ones have been the best? Which ones have been the worst? I can start off. um, The best to me, I really love what the Texans have done. Losing Jonathan Grenard. And this was before they got Daniel Hunter. Mm. Losing Jonathan Grenard. They signed Nico Autry. Not the same player, but still gives you steady production. 
They lost Blake Cashman. They signed Aziz Alshair, who last year with the Titans played really well, and he's familiar with D'Amico Ryan's system in his time with San Francisco. Jeff Okuda, I thought a one-year flyer, that's fine. And then they went big game hunting, and they got Daniil Hunter. For me, it's really more so about the value of the contracts. Instead of dishing out major money for Grenard and Blake Cashman, you sign guys that didn't cost as much. They cost a fraction of it in Autry and Al Shire, and then you also get Neil. I think their free agent deals have been the best. They're not recklessly spending money. They're spending it and allocating it in a very smart way. Okay, fair enough. Uh, see, ironically... Uh, one of the best deals for me is going to be Bryce Huff to the Eagles. Uh, a three-year, $51 million contract. You needed some help at the, at the edge, especially uh, after last season. We, we understand that we look at the linebackers, we look at the DBs. Jalen Carter, DPOY. But, but Bryce Huff, especially next to Jalen Carter, you lose Fletcher Cox, but we expect Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis to, to take a leap in that regard. But bringing Bryce Huff along for the ride is obviously an amazing deal. And one of the more low-key ones would be Lloyd Cushenberry to the Titans. They needed some offensive line help. You get the best center available at the free agency period. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry is definitely going to be one of those signings for me where you're, you're trying to put Levis in a situation in this upcoming season that was better than last year. He was under pressure constantly. That's one of the big reasons why Tannehill is no longer the starting quarterback there. That's one of the main reasons why Derrick Henry decided it was his time to, to leave Tennessee. But now you're trying to, to build something, and now you, you move on from Grover, and now you go and you bring in Lloyd Cushenberry. To me, especially for, for the deal, three uh, four years, $50 million, that's amazing for a center, especially of his caliber. So, sorry, you did a team. You did individual deals. What are we doing? I did, like, the team, I think, I did team because their individual deals, I think, were good. Oh, okay. I have individual, yeah. but I, I grabbed a couple teams. Also. Okay, you want to go? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Because I think you, you know, you took the Texans. I was going to say the Texans, you know. Though, and I'm actually surprised because when we texted, I felt like you didn't love what was happening with the Texans. At first, but it he makes did a lot it, of But sense. then when they started to cook yeah, up, yeah, yeah, he which started. Makes, he was yeah, like, they sure. didn't assign Danico or any of those guys yeah, at well, first. They, sure. they were gaining some good traction. Yeah, you you know? weren't wrong, though. They lost some guys. They, lo- they did. They first, like, quick, too. It was like they lost guys fast. But um, for me, I like what the Cleveland Browns have done. Oh, what a surprise. You what know, a I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I didn't like You know, they picked up Jerry Judy, Judy, who I think is an upgrade from Elijah Moore. You know, no, no disrespect to Elijah Moore. I think Judy's a little bit better. You know, bringing back Smith. You know, I think bringing in Jameis Winston was an underrated cool move because I think last year you saw the quarterback turmoil. You saw the fact that Deshaun went down. Then you had PJ in. You know, and then you had Dorian, the guy who Dells thought would play at some point for a while. Was that wrong? At the year. He nah. played? Yeah, he's all right. Said, all you're right. Was he, was he was right on both. <laughs> you got lucky. I as shit. said Aiden and uh, and uh, yeah. So and, and then you had Joe Flacco coming off the couch. Dorn so now, so, so bringing in Winston was dope because now you kind of get some stability at that second quarterback spot. Something that you need in case Deshaun Watson, you know, trips up again. And then of course. <laughs> The Buffalo Bills, man. What can we say about this team? You know, oh, I'm over <laughs> him, man. What can we say about this team? They did a lot of sneaky things, you know, brought back a lot of their depth pieces, like, you know, Deion Dawkins, who had an all pro year last year, you know, bringing in. You saw him troll? Yeah, he's funny as shit for that. I thought he was legitimately leaving. Yeah. Uh, bringing back AJ, bringing back Jones. You know, a lot of guys who were depth pieces for a team that was banged up last year, a team that, you know, need, had guys just plugging in, plugging out, and making plays for them. And then just them. You know, realizing the white era is over, the poor era is over, the Hyde era is over. Like you, you gotta make up, uh, you gotta create cap space. You know, you gotta bring in young players. They understood that, so bringing back their depth and then just creating cap space is something that they needed to do. So I'm, I'm fine with what they did. My teams, man, we're here. The two teams that I liked are actually the two teams that lost Kirk Cousins and gained Kirk Cousins. Uh, <laughs> you know, for the Vikings, you lose out on your franchise quarterback, but I thought they did a really good job pivoting, bringing in Jonathan Grenard, bringing in Blake Cashman, Andrew uh, Van Ginkle. Aaron Jones, who they signed today, one-year, $6 million deal, who, in my opinion, if healthy, is better than Josh Jacobs, who the Green Bay Packers just cut. So you lose Kirk Cousins, but you bring in all of these guys to help the defense, and then you bring in Sam Darnold, who high ceiling, low floor, but it's a one-year deal, so maybe there's a world he could do something with Kevin O'Connell. And then for the Falcons, you go from a team who is really not anyone, is nobody's thinking about the Falcons when you have Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke. Now you bring in Kirk Cousins, and there's a legitimate chance you can make an NFC Championship-like push with this team. I don't think that's yeah. out of the realm of possibility. I think they're going to win a lot Sorry, of the games in the regular that. season. Super winnable <laughs> division. And then bringing in Darnell Mooney, three years, $39 million to be that second wide receiver next to Drake London. Having him, London, Pitts, Bijan with Kirk. 
an offensive minded head coach coming from the Rams staff. I think the Falcons and Vikings both uh, both panned out. I didn't know you had PFF. Yeah, we all, we all got. We PFF. all do. Yeah, it's a it's a company thing. You, you, pick a side. Yeah. Uh, get you need the, the password. Like it, I would like get that. the password. I would like that so much. Okay, essentially know? what I did is that you guys I, that I looked right, at. Uh, black guy doesn't have this stuff. It's been in the group chat multiple times. Nah, there's no reason why you shouldn't have it. All right, so the win percentage amongst exactly. all edge rushers in the NFL. Here we go. Which is the amount of times they win on their pass rushes. Bro, I thought you said the film was enough, bro. <laughs> Kayvon <laughs> Thibodeau is at 6.4%, which is 110 out of 128 edge rushers that qualify. All right, bro. Good to Where's know. Bryce Huff? Big numbers guy. Bryce Look. Huff. Let me see. He's number three. He's a goat. Yeah, he's number three. Oh, why'd you let him go? Because they, they we're morons. Hey. The Jets are going to be my loser. I really Spoiler. didn't want to let him go. We robbed yeah. the Jets and the uh, Giants. Oh, so good. Both Jets said, see ya. Bye, Bryce. You, you guys didn't me. mention these moves. Um, I have a loser, too. I have the worst. Oh, uh, I have losers. Okay, okay. cool. I, I thought I'll we were going to do... Uh, that's fine. Go ahead. I'll mention this one more winner. Is Jacksonville one of them? No. You think they lost? Oh, I'm they, waiting. They signed Gabe Davis. L. Oh. <laughs> Casual. Casual. <laughs> 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 I did that for your reaction. For the Lions... I think they won because they're you know, I understand the big move for them is like getting a luxurious need, but trading a third round pick for Carl Davis, they signed Ooh. Amik Robertson, who last year was solid for the Raiders. You know, they're not getting any star at corner, but they're making the secondary better marginally. And I think that's at least a good sign and they understand that that's a weakness on their team. I think they did improve with Carl Davis. Uh so I think these deals for them really has been really low risk. So I think they won. How do we feel about the Dolphins? L? Oh, not yet. You know, they, I, I got to see what they do. The losses hurt. The picked up Poyer. Poyer, Brooks. There, there's definitely some optimism there. Aaron Brewer, that's the one I said. I, that, that's a little ten, bit past Tennessee their prime. Left, uh, Tennessee let go, but they were able to capitalize. That kind of emphasizes Connor Williams will not be back with the Dolphins. Yeah, but he's so that's upsetting. Worse. I do uh, worry no, about that. Defense, you're saying? Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's that's it's not a W to me. I'm not I'm not really happy about. They that. have two third round comp picks. So uh, because they lost Wilkins and they lost Robert Hunt. So I think you know we have to see with the Dolphins first. What else, who else they sign? The worst teams. I, I had the Cowboys here, but they didn't make no move really. But whatever, we'll talk that's about the them. Loser. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about them later when we do like actual losers. The Titans signing Kenneth Murray two years, fifteen mil. He's one of the worst linebackers in the league. And the only reason he was getting snaps with the Chargers is because he was a former first-round pick. The fact that an organization willingly paid him money to start on their team, I think, is a bit alarming. Uh, because they let Al Shire walk, and for what? For Kenneth Murray, who, I mean, he just really is terrible. Not great. The Bears with DeAndre Swift, I mentioned that earlier. And call me crazy, but uh, the Raiders giving Christian Wilkins 100 mil. I thought that was I way like too much money. Either. Uh, I mean, it's way too much money. What's their direction? He's this an is a, amazing player. He's an amazing he's player, but he's not an amazing pass rusher. Like, he's a run stopper. So, like, you're not getting that much better at rushing the passer. I think his career high in sacks is, what, like six sacks? He doesn't get after the passer much. Um, and his win rates are, like, not at the top either. So, 100 mil for a run-stopping interior defensive lineman, it's a lot of money. And they're a team that still doesn't have an answer at quarterback. I don't care that they just signed Gardner Minshew. Yeah. It's a team that I feel like they're trying to compete now, but they're still like a bit all over the place. I thought that move, if that's really the only splash move they make in free agency, I think it was a big time loss. Um, I'm kind of surprised Leonard Williams got the, the bag that he get. I know that the Seahawks traded a decent pick to the Giants for him, but $64 million, Leonard Williams is a solid player, uh, but but three years you're going to end up giving him around 20, 20 something million a, a season, uh, around twenty one point five million a season. Uh, I think he's a solid ball player, but I don't know if that's the direct. I mean, Seattle's I guess in the position of keeping talent. But Question: I was surprised to see that contract given out. How do we legitimately feel about the Commanders' offseason so far? I think they've done a solid job. Just. Filling up holes Treading. with solid players. Treading, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not against saving your cap for future purposes. Yeah, yeah. You don't need, just because you have the money doesn't mean you should be spending it because kind, we see teams go all out and spending their cap and then in the lot next season, you're, 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 you're kind of screwed. Uh, but they still have a bunch of money left over. Honest winner, not just saying this, Denver Broncos. We're winners because we freed up cap. 
We have over $40 million in cap now. We brought in Brandon Jones. That's a cheaper option than Justin Simmons now. Of course, not the player, but we saved some money in that regard. Uh, the fact that we're going to go into the, to 2025, and now we have a, some money that we can allocate to, to needs, strong needs, whether that's the wide receiver position, whether that's going to be addressing the edge position for the Denver Broncos, whether that's addressing linebackers, losing Josie Jewell hurt today. I won't lie. That definitely did sting a little. But the fact that we have money after losing $85 million in dead money to Russell Wilson's contract, as we were able to figure it out so quickly, I'm impressed that we had a plan and we're executing. If you were just to, to cut Russell and we kind of treaded around negative salary cap or $0 salary cap, I'm worried about our future. At least now, Sean Payton made a decision and he's executing on a game plan. I'm looking at that as a W. The Broncos is an entire retool, and I think that's the direction you guys need to go in. For sure. I know you said this jokingly earlier, but the Jaguars, if they don't sign back Calvin Ridley, they're losers. For sure. Because Gabe Davis, I think, is a solid player. And the role that he would play is essentially the role that Zay Jones would play when he was on the team. And now you can run more 12 personnel. So you can have Gabe Davis out there and Whit Ridley. Well. Yeah, he can block really well. You don't always have to have Christian Kirk on the field. And then when you go into 11 personnel, you can have Gabe Davis be the X. And all he's going to do is threaten the defense vertically. And now that allows Calvin Ridley to thrive in the areas that he thrives in. And I think that's what's huge. Gabe Davis... You know, I know that really on every single route outside of nine routes and out routes, he he's a negative player. He's not a route runner, but in the role and what what he does in his role, he's a very good. And that's what the Jaguars needed. But it is all dependent on if they re-sign Calvin Ridley, mm. because if they don't, now you're you looking at will? Kirk and Gabe Davis being the one. Ridley wants to go back. I think they will. I don't know. They're working on a deal. Yeah. New England also offered him a deal, but it sounds like doesn't want to go. He does not want to go to New England. I think he's going to stay in Jacksonville. I think so too. I don't know if this is updated or not, but Commanders still have an insane amount of money to spend. I mean, they had a ton of money entering the season. They haven't spent a lot of money. But they gave out, like Joel mentioned, they gave out a, a, a good amount of contracts. They signed yeah, the center from Dallas, uh, Tyler really Biedat. No, like, of, huge no you're right. Uh, Frankie Louvre like was 31 deals. mil. 10 mil. Yeah, 10 mil. Sorry. Mm-hmm. 10, well, three 10 years, 31 mil. mil, excuse me. But yeah, tennis season. Same with the Biedat's tennis season. Uh, Nick Allegretti. Yeah, the, Armstrong was are, 11. No, they're nothing. No. They're nothing. Yeah, it'd be like. With signing bonuses and guaranteed money, it'd be less than ten million a season. But yeah, Armstrong's I was, another one. The facts. Gabe Davis contract, I was a bit surprised. I was surprised <laughs> to see that uh, Gabe Davis. He was going. Quick. I'll be honest. I was surprised to see Darnell Mooney get paid and Gabe Davis. They got the same they contract. The same, the same contract, and then on top of it, got paid more than Saquon Barkley, a guy who's done well more in his career as opposed to those other two. But it speaks to how not in the playoffs, the receiver not, not Gabe Davis in the playoffs. Saquon was pretty good against Minnesota. Not 200 yards. Not 200 for touchdowns. No way, no how. Very few He's receivers in NFL that. history yeah, have had yeah, as okay. good of a game like that. Uh, but again, game, it just game. shows how much more valued the wide receiver position is as opposed to the running back. You could be as impactful as you are as Saquon Barkley, but still not get paid as the top 50, top 60 wide receiver in the National Football He'll win League. He'll OPOI. I thought uh, two moves the Patriots made. I think I could give the Patriots praise now that Belichick's gone. Kendrick Bourne, three years, 19 mil for six six. Miller season Kendrick seems Bourne's like a, a come player. up for Kendrick Bourne. He's a, a really solid like wide receiver three. And Josh Uche, uh, he was not great last season. He only had three sacks. I want to say three and a half sacks. But the year before, he had I think fifty pressures or eleven sacks. He was really good two years ago. So to get him on a basically nothing deal is you know a good upside play. Under the radar moves that you liked, oh, my those two. Are mine. Um, so, oh, those are yours. <laughs> those would be mine. <laughs> okay, those are yours. Mine is Geno Stone to the Bengals. Geno Stone now gives them more of a veteran presence there with. Jordan Battle and Dax Hill still developing. They still got Nick Scott, I believe. Need the secondary to be better. And I think Geno Stone is just a playmaker. He's just somebody that he's he's all over the field. And he had an interception on Joe Burrow when the Ravens matched up in their first matchup. That was just an awesome job disguising and reading Joe Burrow's eyes the entire way. The Ravens, I can understand them letting him walk because they have Marcus Williams. They have Kyle Hamilton. Mm-hmm. They have depth that position. So this, wasn't, this didn't hurt that much. But him going to a division rival... That hurt because you're going to have to see him. And the Chargers, no splash move, but with the moves that they're making, you can see they're building an identity. They signed Gus Edwards, who Your now guy. is a physical bruising back. Yeah, he's going to be awesome with the Chargers. And then Will Disley, who with the Seahawks. What's your definition of awesome? Awesome. Like, what you mean? Well, you're going like, to see him. Number. You're going to see 800 awesome. yards. Yes. That's awesome? Yes. Okay. That's awesome. Sounds good. That's awesome. How many tutties? Over 10. 
Oh, I, I was gonna say to be awesome, I need double digit. Yeah, if you're gonna give me eight, he gonna, I need he gonna get ten touchdowns. Eight hundred sure. eight hundred yards is not awesome. Yeah, I need ten. I need like ten eleven. But eight hundred and ten? That's fair. We can talk. That's, That's pretty fair. awesome. They signed Will Disley, who with the Seahawks has been one of the highest graded blocking tight ends in the NFL. So the the way and the identity the Chargers are building his team, Jim Harbaugh's building his team, is with physicality. He wants guys to block well. He wants guys to have that type of edge to them. And that's why I think with the fifth pick, they're going to go with Joe Alt. I think Joe Alt fits this criteria exactly. And I understand, like, we have this idea of Herbert being with a team that is air raid, just throw the ball and sling it and get 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns because Herbert is that talented. But I think the identity Harbaugh is building his team around is the identity he built. He built a similar one with the 49ers, with Michigan, and he's doing it with the Chargers now. And these moves aren't like big top names, but they're setting a precedent to what I think the Harbaugh era will be in L.A. For sure. Question. Uh, Sorry. Uh, huh? Sorry, Drew. Uh, I'm looking on here. It says Patrick Queen went to the Jets. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, that, that's wrong. He yeah. went to the Steelers. Yeah, I, was, I saw that. That's why I was confused because I was going to ask you how you felt, but now it's like, cap. Yeah, it's cap. Uh, um, PFF folded. I better. Uh, blah, I made a prize pick entry, entry yep. on Tyrese Halliburton. And of course he's shit in the bed. Why, why wouldn't he <laughs> shit in the bed? You know, like, it's just like insane to me how he's been shit in the bed. I need him and PG to combine for more than. Five threes. I love how you take your time when you say it. No, just absolutely. to make sure no, I don't I mess up. You're I love here, that. Here. He's at one. Oh no! I just need him to get three, so PG can get three, okay. and we call it a day. All right, that's cool. That's you know? cool. And uh, I need Brunson and Van Vliet to combine for more than fourteen point five assists. Brunson has been stuck on six for like three quarters, and he's pissing me off. What happened? What are you? Like he just slowly turns at me and smiling at looking at this cave on sack against who? <laughs> uh, Washington. The Washington. Is this not clean up though? Look. Kayvon's here. I see what you mean. I see what you mean by clean up. That's like three now. He's stepping up in the pocket trying to do some shit, and Kayvon's right there. It's really your guy's fault. That's a pressure from Okariki. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Kayvon. All I'm saying. Great hey, he's, there, he's, saying. There, he's there when you need him. Guy knows how to finish a play. Yeah, he's there when you need some him. Some people that's don't. All, that's all you can ask for. Um, some low-key moves that I liked. I liked Jadobi Ouzier to the Tennessee Titans. Uh Tennessee has needed DB help for years now, and I was glad that that was a move that they decided to make. I already mentioned Lloyd Cushenberry, ex-Bronco. Wish you well, King. Third-round pick getting turned into $50 million. Congratulations to you. Uh, and the last one I mentioned, we spoke about it a little bit, but Devin Singletary on, on a, a little bit more than $5 million a season for the next three years. Losing Saquon Barkley stings. I understand that. But you have the front office to blame if you're the New York Giants and if you're a New York Giants fan. That's solely on the front office why Saquon Barkley is not a giant. Uh, going to, to, to the Eagles is a little bit crazy. But you get a replacement, a firm replacement with Devin Singletary. He's nowhere near Saquon Barkley, but he's passable. And for $5 million, he's going to be able to do a fine job, whether it's rushing the football or receiving the football. He can do a fine job in that regard. And, and you don't need to... to you can probably, if you're in the draft, try and draft a, a, a running back in one of those middle rounds, late rounds. Uh, but for, for the value, I really like Devin Singletary. For me, I'm going to go Leonard Floyd to the Niners. You know, I, I do think, you know, watching him play all last year, you know, I think he, he was a great depth piece. You know, he's the guy who brought energy to the field. Somebody who, you know, made timely plays at times when they needed it. And I think going to play with Greenlaw, you know, going to play, with those boys in San Fran, with uh, Wagner. I think that's going to help his game even more, you know, being surrounded by that much talent. You know, just naturally, you should play better, you should feel better. And I think the energy he brings can definitely, you know, help that team, especially with a team that just let go of Eric Armstead. You know, I don't think they're going to pay Chase Young. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in that that's situation. Crazy. So Bring me Eric Armstead. Cool, cool. Which team? Denver. Oh, all right, bet, bet. Bring me him, um, most yeah, definitely. So, so a team that needs depth, you know, I thought Floyd was definitely a good move because I, I liked him as a player last year. He definitely gave me some good vibes. Yeah, he was good. And that's going to do it for this free agency Yo, show. Hold on, is Halley going to turn up? What is, what's going on? His injury is still bothering him. Yo, bro. It's been almost a month and a half. I'm, yeah, I'm getting pissed off. What do you mean? His, I'm pissed off. Didn't you just I'm tell me? Didn't you just tell me about Steve Don, Nash. What did he say about Donovan Mitchell? Yeah, you're right. Wait, so I never why said he was Steve No, Nash. you said Steve Nash. No, I didn't. You're cooked. You that said was, he's an all-time great player. What did he say about Donovan Mitchell? Play, right? <laughs> play. That's what he said, right? That was nasty. Yeah, that now he's nasty. talking about he's injured. What are we doing? I need nasty. three. I'll be honest. You're nasty for using something I said off the pod on the pod. I didn't tell you're the whole nasty. story. I just said you said he's play. Nasty. One of my you, you laughed at me for saying Brunson over Halley. Leave it at that. Laughed? You did? did you laugh? I would never laugh about that. You did? 
You guys call me crazy. Who's you guys? Not a lot. All three man. of you. I had Hallie like as not as like nine. <laughs> the like real nine. question is, you're such a Halley hater. Why would you even place an entry with him? Why Look. do you why do you think I'm a Halley hater? You are. What makes me a Halley hater? And uh, you don't like him. Amen or Halley? Because Garland. Ah. Oh. I'm taking it over a lot of guys. <laughs> if I you're like about Maxie, to say, what did I say? If you're about to say because he sold you on some plays, then I think you're lying. What, about what? With Halle Byrne. I don't hate Halle, though. You don't? No. Okay. I hate Ant Man. No doubt in my mind. Now I do. I hate did him see, so much. Did you see how he was teasing a Gatorade bottle? No. What was he on? You, you saw see, him complain about the refs again? You, you saw yeah, you saw him talk about the Lakers, I would have bust your ass. What no, he said about tr- the Lakers. Trust show? me, I understand. Yeah. What is, he, he's talking nonsense. No, he complains every play. Uh, uh, shut up. Stop shooting threes and go to the basket. You'll get calls. Stop it's complaining so much. Yeah, he gets they just they glaze him. They want him to be MJ so bad. So bad. Like it's the commentators getting so bad. So yes, I hate it, man. But I don't hate Halley. You saw the way that Shaq was Going crazy. Yeah, he was throwing it. So Perkins and um Perkins and Shannon Sharp was having to throw it off to see who uh, throws LeBron more. It was insane. It was on uh first take, it was just like, yo, I glazed LeBron. No, I've been doing this since 01. Like it was oh nuts. <laughs> Jesus it was crazy. Christ. I've been doing this since 01. Oh, one. Since he got into the league, Bro, it's Perk like was wild. Yeah. Oh man. That's gonna do it for this episode. Free agency recap. We'll be back later this week with an NBA episode and Talking about other things that happened in the NFL free agency. That. Definitely recapping those things, our winners and losers. Thank you for watching. You can follow us on Twitter at Pickasad Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pickasad Podcast. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.